Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. This is my educational and informational true crime YouTube channel. This is strictly for educational purposes only. Now, tonight I present to you another never-seen-before world-exclusive true crime interrogation video. I'm not going to give you any spoilers on this video. You're just going to have to pay close attention. There's not going to be any analysis throughout, because that's up to you, the viewer, to use your brain and analyze what you're seeing and hearing in this video. This video is for educated folks, and I know you're educated, so I hope you enjoy it. Anyways, let's jump right into this video and see what the suspect has to say for themselves. And neighbors tell me it's hard to believe that family members are the ones arrested in connection to Jamel Kelly's murder. Six months after disappearing, the body of 24-year-old Jamel Kelly was found behind this abandoned home where neighbors say he was buried in this shallow grave. Investigators say Kelly's mother and girlfriend reported him missing on March 6. Police believe Kelly's former stepfather, Jared Studemeyer, put Kelly's body in the trunk of his car and dumped it before the car was burned. In May, police say Jared Studemeyer, Kelly's mother, Stacy Studemeyer, and Jared Studemeyer's girlfriend, Shakira Atwater, were all charged in connection to Kelly's murder. As a mother, I'm like, what could your child do so bad that, you know, you would kill him? And then just to dump him somewhere like he's nothing. Hello, Mr. Stewart. Hello. Hey, Stacy. Okay. Let's take a photo of you remember me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna... I don't want to squeeze you in down there, but I want to try to create just a little bit of room for myself, if you don't mind. Yep. Yeah, I can barely squeeze it. It's pretty tight. I'm just going to squeeze it. That's the one. Well, like I said, we wanted just to, to just kind of catch up where we were last night. I know you said you had a lead to pick everything was fine with your kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just to kind of do to what, where we are right now, uh, just like we did yesterday, we just got to go through these forms, okay? Okay. Right. Um, my question is, is um, did y'all have y'all found the mail? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we'll get into all that, okay? We want to, there's some information that, like I said, we wanted to talk to you yesterday, but you had to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but we can't. We can't discuss these things. This is just normal protocol. We can't discuss those without actually going through these steps with you. Do you understand? So I get the top one, the police station. Today is now the 23rd. That is 1802. 602. Um, you have the following rights of the United States Constitution. You did not have to make a statement or say anything. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Anything you say came to you against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before you make a statement or before any questions are asked of you and have a lawyer with you during question. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you can afford to hire a lawyer, I want to be appointed for you before any question if you wish. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. And if you do answer questions, you have the right to stop and answer questions at any time. You can still with a lawyer. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you understand it, I've explained this to you just on that line that was totally yesterday. So when we when we left off yesterday, do you know exactly where we left off at? Okay. I mean, I'll just, I'll just ask him. Um, I, I know he had to leave abruptly. Okay. Um, so, like we spoke about yesterday, huh? Okay. Like we spoke about yesterday, this is we we work in the homicide unit, so this got transferred to us from missing persons. So initially, you reported him as a missing persons on the tenth. Correct. Okay. Um, he went missing on the 6th? The 7th. The 7th. Was it the 7th or 6th? I believe it was the 6th. I guess it was close to the night time, so maybe, yeah. maybe in between those times of like midnight going into the 7th. Okay. okay. Um, so, what, I mean, what other conversations have you had with Detective Tom Burke reference to what has been disclosed by your son? I haven't talked to him since. Um, I told you he called me and left me a message yesterday, but I didn't call him because y'all said it was transferred to yeah, so. Okay. Um, prior to that, you, you had no contact with him whatsoever? Mm -mm. I called him a couple of times, but okay. he just, I guess he's, I don't know if you're busy or what, but he don't return his call. He finally returned my call yesterday after I called him a, a couple of times prior. Have you ever spoken with him at all? Yeah. He okay. At my home. Huh? At my home. But what about on the phone? You never had any Yeah, follow. I had a conversation with him on the phone. Okay, and what was said there? Did he tell you anything additional? No. 
It doesn't help me. Nothing additional. This was like a while ago. when This is when they took the car. I called him about the car. Oh, the BMW? And I was trying to figure out like why they took it. Sure. But, um, then he was like, he told me he was going to check on it for me. Mm -hmm. And then he would get back with me. Okay. He never got back with me. So I called him up and said a few times. And no return call until yesterday. Okay. Um, well, I mean, here's, I guess, so why do you think we're now getting, uh, I guess, why do you think, what do you think happened to Jamel? I don't know. I don't know what happened to Jamel. I really don't know what happened. I mean, th this is obviously a stressful situation for you. This is your son mm -hmm. who's got missing. Um, and that's why, like I said, me and Ted Hopley, we were trying to find the answers so that we can give, you're the, you're the person that we want to talk to you because mm -hmm. you're, I mean, you're his mother. Um, ultimately you have... You, you have the most to gain from getting your son back. Okay. Right, but then you have all these people that's on Facebook that I'm sure y'all talk to, like um, Malcolm Mom and all of these people that's just posting stuff on Facebook well, I mean, that wasn't even around. I mean, no and sure, and that's why we're the one, that's why I want to talk, that's why I asked you to come in here, okay, mm -hmm. to talk to you and first to face. You gotta understand, people on Facebook are gonna say they're, what they're gonna say. We as police, we can't go by what is said on Facebook, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just people have opinions, we, you know, it's, it's not it's not as good as me as a face to face conversation as to what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And really, the person that we should start talking with about this is 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 with you because Jamel lived with you, mm -hmm. um, and you have I mean you birthed him. I mean you know him more than better than anyone else. Like I said, he's not married, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, like I said, my wife can probably know me better than than most people outside of my mother. Okay, there's probably the same thing for the Ted of Hopley. Um, that's just basic human dynamics. Okay, so we want to talk to you to figure out what do you what do you think actually happened to Jamel? Do you think he's still alive? Is there a possibility that he's still alive? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think I don't think Gerard did anything to to hurt him. Basically, like I said, he raised, he helped me raise him. Basically, I mean, they had problems going, you know, in our household as far as coming up sometimes. But when Jamel came back to Cincinnati, they was. Like they was fine. I mean, he cut Jamel hair. You know, he just did things, the fatherly things, like he used to do. So okay. I don't think that he. I mean, if something, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And you he, haven't had any contact with Jamel. Like you said yesterday, you, you can't get a phone. You can't get any money. You're not getting any money. You're giving him any money like you used to. No. Right. He hasn't asked you. For, he hasn't called you. You haven't, mm -hmm. haven't heard any voicemails. Mm -hmm. Has he? Have you checked like hospitals like? Baker Act, I mean, mental health I, facilities? I think, no, I haven't checked them, but um, this, when I did Baker Act him, because Jamel, father, his biological father is was paranoid schizophrenic. Well, it, it hits you at a certain age. I'm sure you probably mm -hmm. know that. We deal with, yeah. So it hits you at a certain age, and his father was diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic, his biological father, and um, two, was diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic at the age of like 22 or 23 okay. or something. So... The way Jamel act, he started fighting when he was in the third grade. Sure. That's so what you and said then just and started, just yeah. you know just fighting everybody. I mean, even when he came home, he tell me stories like, "Oh, mama, I was at the gas station and this this guy did this and then I stuck to him." You know, just different things that he tell me. And so something just said, kind of see if there's a problem with him or whatever. So after he started threatening me and saying, you know, threatening me because Jamel never threatened me, right? So um, when he started threatening me and saying what he gonna do and all of this stuff, then I'm like, well, maybe there's something wrong. His, like I said, his biological father committed suicide in like 2006 or 2008 or something like that. Okay. Jamel went down there to stay with his. You guys were separated at that point. Who? You and his, you and his father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, yeah, we we had been separated okay, a long time. Like, been a long time ago, and okay. then one day I just happened to see him and he was acting. Um, you saying Jamel now? No, that his that father. father. Yeah. Okay. One day I happened to see him and he was acting crazy. And Jamel was a little kid then. And um, so anyways, when Jamel, like I said, he had been fighting like all of these years, he had been fighting. So when he finally get, got into adulthood, you know, we thought, talked about him going to Ohio, being with his dad's people or whatever, sure. which he, because he was fighting here, he was always getting so Jamel. Get, I couldn't get, send mm -hmm. him to the mall. Get him out of his element. Right. Because sure. if I send him to the mall to go get me something, he have to leave the mall because he's fixing to get into it with somebody. And it's just that, it's just that simple for him to get into it with somebody. So, um, when the opportunity came to move, to him to go to Ohio, that was a good idea. He did. But guess what? He had to come back home because he was getting into it with his uncles and his grandmother and, 
you know, all of these people. That's that's why I went and gave him the car, the Toyota. I gave him that car because they took the car from him and he was calling me, Mama, I don't have a car. You know, every time he needs something. And I'm there because I'm the mom. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always sure. going to be there for him regardless. Yeah. And so I drove to Atlanta, gave him my car. I got on the um, got a rental car, drove back to Jacksonville. You know, just things like that that I do. He said, Mama, they, they, his uncle had a cell phone. The, Jamel was on a cell phone plan. Just things like that. They won't pay the bill for him. He got to figure out how he's going to pay it himself. Mm -hmm. But he called his mama, asked his mama, Mama, can you wire me? I mean, I did all of these things for this boy. And then when he came home and he just started threatening me, and I'm like, okay, well, so I figured something was wrong. So I did Baker Act him. And they told me that I, I didn't have to do anything. They said if the detectives or police officer find him, they will get him and they will take him to a, a okay. mental health oh, so, you you, so you filed for the Baker mm -hmm. Act? And they okay. said they said I didn't have to do anything except for when they find him, they'll get him, take him to a mental facility, and then they'll check to see if everything is okay with him. When was that filed? Um, that was around was that the same time. Before or after this? This uh, when you went missing? When you went it was the same day. The same day. The same it was day. the same day. Yeah. So is it before when you said because this happened late at night? So was it earlier that day? The next yeah that morning. So it was the following, following morning. morning. Yeah. Okay. And you, yep. and you just went down just to get a big rack? Thing? No, I did a restraining order because then he started talking about killing and all of the stuff like that. So then I did a restraining right. order also. Did you call the police that night? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what was that argument? Um, he came home. Because like I said, Jamel brought a girl home. I woke up one morning in a suitcase in my arm. Um, mm -hmm. He asked me if he could come something out. telling him, no, you know, I don't let y'all. Y'all got brothers, little brothers that's looking up to y'all. Sure. So yeah. anyway... Um, so he argued me back and forth, back and forth about that. I woke up the next morning, it's a suitcase in my front room. So, um, I said, okay, he was like, oh, we can leave if you want to, you know, whatever. And I'm like, no, it's fine. You know, I'm not going to put the girl out because mm -hmm. she's from freaking Ohio. Mm -hmm. Like, no. So anyways, um, so they live in there or whatever. And then, um, I don't know what you asked me. I guess well, yeah, why you called the police that night, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so he was coming home, like he was doing, I think he was, he was thinking Miss Gerard was telling me how to run my home because Jamel what, he was, started, what Jamal was thinking that? Mm -hmm, he okay. was thinking that because he was saying stuff to make me think that I'm just like, nobody ain't running my house for me, this is me. Mm -hmm. So like I said, he started, I get in the car, I, he opened up the car door, it smelled like weed. Weed. Mm -hmm. um, he riding around doing stuff. He went up to the park to um, where Gerard and uh, Coach at, and started arguing, started fussing, like he fighting, you know, fighting words and stuff like that. So then he came home. Who was he arguing and fussing with up there? Who Gerard? Just Gerard. From what I understand, because he he uh, sent me a text message saying, "Oh yeah, I went to the park and I was gonna fight your dude and this and that." And he's not my dude. But anyways, so he telling me this that he gonna do this, and I was like, Jamel, you doing it? You you ride around in a car that is in my name, mm -hmm. selling, got drugs in the mm -hmm. car. Um, I can see why that made you upset. Didn't damage, you know, damaging people's going up there trying to fight people, this and that. So I said I was gonna do this for you. I'm not gonna do this no more. Did Gerard call the police when that when this car got damaged? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. How bad was it damaged? Was it just like a? No, the windshield wiper was completely bust out. The windshield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the windshield wiper was completely busted out. Did you say wiper you or the windshield? The, windshi the whole oh, the glass. whole windshield. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but this was the Which day before. Was this was the day before that. This was the day before the windshield got busted. Jamel was up there trying to fight at him. At the ballpark. At the Again? ballpark. So he went there two days in a row? Yeah. He went up there the first day and he was trying to fight them at the ballpark. Then he came home and started saying, oh, I'm going to have somebody come over and bust all your car windows out, this and that. All of this stuff he was saying to me. And I'm like... So then the next day, he was like, oh, and you're going to be embarrassed when you go to the park because they're going to say, oh, your son is acting like this and acting like that. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not going to be embarrassed. because Do you go to the park you. often? Me? Yeah. No, not no more. Okay. I don't go up there because my son's 12 now, so this is probably his last season playing. Okay. Um, park is it just like the... Baseball. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I guess it's 12 the cutoff? 12, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then 12. they start, I guess, It's like 4 to 12, yeah. Okay. And so, um, and this is your, this draws organization. Like, he, this, he is the... Director of this whole thing. Of the baseball thing? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and, um, so I'm like, well, I'm not going to be embarrassed, you know. So anyway, so the next day he came, 
I, he can't know. So I said, called him in my room. I sat him down and I said, Jamel, I said, I want to help you. I want to get you an apartment for you and McKay to go move it. This and that. I said, but you got to stop doing No, it's not, it's not over this and that. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do, you know, just so This is just between him and Gerard. Yeah. I mean, what is that? Why is there so much contempt between I them? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I think, like I said, because I think that he... Think that he's running my house. That Gerard's running yeah, my house. Yeah, but he's not running my house. Like he had his own house to run. Has Gerard told you? I mean, does Gerard have discontent? No. I guess Jamel. Mm, like I said, when Jamel first came back home, they was cool talking. J he, Gerard cut Jamel's hair because he cuts hair, so he comes and cuts the boys' hair. So he does hair. for our living. No, he drives truck. Okay. So he came. He come over there to the house. He cut the kids' hair. He talked to Jamel. He cut Jamel hair. He um. He uh. Said, oh, Jamel, I got some watches. I um, brought Jamel, like, three or four watches. You know, just stuff like a father would do, mm -hmm. like I said. But, so, Gerard never had any hard feelings towards Jamel. Jamel was just a problem. One, If you interview his his brother, his oldest brother, I don't know if y'all did or not, but he will tell you the same story. Anyway, um, so the next day came, and that's when Jamel, he texted me, and it said, oh, you're, oh, it's real out here. And I can show you the text, but it's, he said, it's real out here. In these streets or something, or shit's really. Do you mind showing me? Uh -uh. These are texts from who? Yeah. From Jamel. Mm -hmm. okay. This was the last. Um, actually, this is the last time the last you time spoke time with him. Me. This is the last text that he sent me. Okay, this is on. So, so he damaged Gerard's vehicle, correct? Yeah, he uh, he he stood. He told me that he stood on the um, the hood of the car. What car is that? The Lincoln. No, who is that? Gerard's. Yeah. So you have a BMW. I have, a B I have a BMW, a Mercedes, and a um, Toyota now. Okay. And, and um, Gerard has a, and a truck, truck and a um, Maserati. And? He don't have the Lincoln because he, um, the Lincoln was kind of like, oh, the Lincoln stayed in the shop probably every week or every two weeks. It was a raggedy um, car. And Jamel just stood on it. He was just driving it like mm -hmm. the work or whatever. But anyway, Jamel bust the window out of it. And then he sent me a text message. This was the last text. So I can tell you actually what day. This was on the 6th, yeah. So this happened on the 6th. I'm sorry, I thought it was the 7th. <laughs> so right here. Shit real out here. I know your dude mad. And that's when he came so home. He, that's who, he's talking about Gerard. Mm -hmm. What time did he say, dude? Um, that was at 9.20 p.m. What time did... What time did... Do you know what time Jamel got to the house? Mm -hmm. I was working, so it had to be after 10. But, um, and so... Is that when you start work? Uh huh. I start work at ten. At ten, mm -hmm. and that's that. That's the work you do at at the at house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is that? You, you, is it like online stuff? Um. Yeah. It's. I sell. Um. We sell Venus swimwear. Oh, like bathing suits and mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. And just online. Venus fashion. You just do it online. Mm -hmm. Well, the calls come in. Oh, you're like a call service. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Service. But you can do that from the house. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um. Yeah, but Venus is off of South Side Blue, mm -hmm. off of um, Beach Boulevard. Back there, San Marco, Marco Beach. Okay. Right, from mm -hmm. FSCJ. Mm -hmm. That's where they are, home office. Okay, gotcha. Um, so, so he sent me this text message that was at like 920. And so he, um, and I, I ignored it. I don't, you know, I don't feed into none of that type of stuff anyway. So he came home and he told me, um, and he bust the windows out of it. I was standing on the top of the stairs when he came in. Um, who the was there? Who was there when he got home? Just me. Mm -hmm. My my son, me and my two sons. Just you and your two boys. Me, Gerard and Gerard, me, Gerard and Gerard. And Ronnie. Mm -hmm. Or Ronnie, is that what you call him? Ronnie. Gerard. His name but is you Gerard. call him Ronnie. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, when he came in, like I said, I was I heard him with some commotion or whatever talking, and he was talking about busting the windows out and all that. He just anyway, talking to himself, yelling, screaming. No, I was saying, you know, I'm sure he knew well, he had, in the house. I, you said commotion. Who is he? Is it just commotion that he's causing by himself? Yeah, because I was standing, when he came in, young. I went and stood at the top of the stairs, looked down, okay. because I was working. And so then he started talking, and then I went into the room so that I can call my job, tell him that I'm getting ready to get off because, you know, I have a lot of noise going on in my house. So then, by the time, so I did hear commotion, but by the time I go out to the window in my bedroom, because my bedroom is across from the office, okay. that's when I looked out the and I saw people outside. So then, by the time I went downstairs and went out, I saw the, my Toyota sitting in sitting in the driveway. Michaela sitting in the car, and they halfway down the street, um, 
the, uh, the gas, Jamel and the gas. And he looked, I guess he saw me because my Porsche light was on and that's when he was like, oh, you're going to die tonight. You know, mom, you're going to die too. And he's going to die. Now, who were the guys that were with him? Um, okay. And, um, what was he wearing? Oh, I don't know. Because you saw him down the road. It was in a, yeah, it, no, when he came by the house, when he came, because I was in the driveway, so when they came by the house in the car, I saw him in the car, but I don't know where he was driving. So who was in the, what kind of car were they in? It was a black car. Big car, I mean, small a, a car? A black, a small. Okay. Is that Mario, was Mario driving? No. Who was driving? I don't, I don't know who was driving. Cause I just looked in, I think Mario, I think he opened up the back door. So, okay. I think he opened up the back door. How many so, people were in the car? Uh, maybe three. Okay. How many people did you see down the street with? Three. Your son? Mm-hmm. You only saw three? Mm-hmm. So you saw your son and two no. people? No, no, no. Four. Total so four, four. total. Mm-hmm. Okay. A total of four people. Can you describe those people to us? I can know. He's tall. Tall. He's tall. But, it's, but like I said, it was da- it's, it's dark. Mm-hmm. It was all the way down the street on the opposite side of the street. So I couldn't even see Jamel's face. You know what okay. I'm saying? So, you know. Um, but... Then they end up going, coming across the street over to this side of the street, the um, left-hand side of the street, because it was all over the, to the, um, the right side of the street. Okay, just so I have a little bit better mm-hmm. understanding of when we're talking about side of the street, are, mm-hmm. are they on the side of the street where your house is, or are they on the opposite side of the street? Okay, so originally they was on the opposite side of the street from okay. where the house is. All right. But it was like further down, like maybe one, two, three, maybe three or four houses down. Okay. Or whatever. And so I'm trying I'm trying to think if they either if they came across the street or they went down further. I wanna say that they came across the street to the opposite side of the street where I was where my house is. They would have come back onto yeah. your side. Yeah. Okay. I, I wanna say they did. I'm not hundred percent sure, okay. but that's what I wanna say. All they right. did. And what happened when they came back on that side that of the street? It. Oh, that was it. Because, like I said, I was back and forth in the house. Okay. And I was trying to get Michaela to get out of the car because I'm getting ready to get my car towed. Because my car smelled like, it's in my name, it smelled like weed. So, But you're doing this time, at 11 o'clock at night? And I did. I did. The police officers was right there. No, no, I, I understand that. Oh, yeah. I just, I because of the simple fact that I said, I'm going to go ahead on and get this. Um, because he wouldn't give me the keys to the car. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um... I said, I'm going to go ahead on and take the car from him, and I want to do it before he comes back home. I said, before he come back home, I want the car to be gone. So I took it to Toyota. I had him, the tow truck driver take it while the police officer was there. Sure. Um, when Michaela called the police police officer, because I was telling her to get out of the car, get out of the car and come mm-hmm. on in the house or whatever. And so um, she wouldn't get out. She was like, I'm going to get out when the police come. I said, okay, fine. So the police eventually ended up coming. And... Um, um, the police ev- eventually ended up coming. While they was there, I called the tow truck driver, and I told him I wanted to take this car to Toyota, which they the police back ended up backing his car out to rekey it. To rekey it. To rekey it. So I have the um the rekey right here. We got one key. Okay. And um and I went and picked it up. And do you still have that car now? Mm, that's the car that I drive. Oh, that's the one you're driving right that's now. The, that's the car the that I'm driving. Yep. And okay. the, um and. Uh, so the police was there when I did that, so no, no, you know, it, so it wouldn't be no issues as far as the car or whatever. So then the police was talking, him and Michaela, they went out, they, you know, they walked around the yard, went in the back, did whatever, they ended up coming back out. And um, he was like, um, that's when he was telling me about uh, she going to call her um, sister or whatever to try to get her. Yeah. Anyway, I told him, I said, well, she don't have to do that, I'll get her. Mm-hmm. So I did, ended up doing that. You got her the, the ticket you mm-hmm. said? The, the plane ticket, and then she ended who, up calling me. I, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but I misunderstood. Who walked into the backyard with Michaela? The police officer. Oh, okay. In the back of your house? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how far, like, I don't know exactly where they went, but I know they went sure. back there. Okay. Um, and then they ended up coming. And they were looking for Jamel? I guess it was for Jamel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, I, the police officer was there. He said, I said, well, you know, are you going to take, they said they would take her to the, um, train or police i mean no, uh, airport, airport. Mm-hmm. and so they took us to the airport and then i ended up she ended up calling me and i ended up going back to the airport at like three something or four something in the morning i could get my credit card receipt because i ended up having to pay for her bag because she had no money so i had so to you actually drove, drove there yep i was trying to do a cash out 
Um, and I showed it, you show you that on my phone when I was trying to do cash out to her. And then she was like, oh, I don't have my card. So I was like, okay. So I was trying to figure out, I called the airport, tried to talk to the supervisor or something. Mm -hmm. I was trying to do whatever it took for me not to have to not go all the way over there. there. Sure. But they couldn't do it. So I ended up driving up there, paying for her things so she could put her bag on the plane. How old is Michaela? I think like 18. She like the same age as my, uh, my son now. That okay. Did anyone go with you to the airport? Mm -hmm. You were by yourself? Mm -hmm. Yep, I drove to the airport. Michaela saw me there, and plus, like I said, I had, I could show uh, where I paid for the bag. Did Michaela say anything else to you while you guys were at the airport? Mm -mm. She didn't say anything. She went and sat. She was like, "Thank you." She went and sat on the on the thing, and that was it. Did Michaela express any concern about what happened to Jamel? The fact that he didn't come back after all this happened? Not to me. I mean, she may have to the police officer, but okay. she didn't say anything. Did she didn't too much say anything to me. Did you have any concern that something, I didn't because that something bad might have, might have happened to mm -mm. you? Because I would have thought, like I said, I, I was trying to get the car towed because I knew I was like, oh, before he get back, I want you know, so no, I wouldn't have thought that something that I would never see him again. Okay. Mm -mm. Who had the bat out there that night when all this was going on? I was, I, when I, when I saw them down there, like mm -hmm. I said, I didn't see anybody with a bat. Okay. All right. So this is where this is where things get a little inconsistent, I guess okay. you would say. Okay. Um, there were some independent witnesses that were present and saw some things that happened that night. Okay. Um, and obviously we've obtained some information from those people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more than just, you know, people just put stuff on Facebook and things like that. Um, you know, I think Detective Bussar told you earlier, obviously, I'm sure, I can't imagine that the roller coaster of emotions you're probably going through with the fact that you haven't heard from your son in mm -hmm. over two months now, mm -hmm. okay? And it sounds like you do everything you can to provide a nice, safe environment mm -hmm. for your children that are staying at your house. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a nice neighborhood you guys live in. Mm -hmm. um, but... I don't think it's, some of the things just don't quite make sense, okay, which is what we're trying to to utilize you to help us understand, get a better understanding, because obviously we weren't there. Detective Bassard wasn't there, I wasn't there. Um, heck, that's my understanding, I don't think any law enforcement was there while this was happening, right? Mm -mm. Yeah, while this was okay. happening. Okay. Um, but we're, we're, we're entering into an area that's getting a little slippery, okay, and we want to ensure that this this area that we're entering into doesn't doesn't have any effect on you or your family any further effect because it sounds like you've experienced I mean a whole lot already with the fact that we can't find Jamel nobody knows where Jamel is yeah. okay. uh, but the fact of the matter is that this case got transferred to homicide for a reason mm -hmm. okay what does that mean to you when it tells you when we tell you that his case has been transferred to homicide what does that mean to you Mrs. Studemeyer it means that. I, I thought maybe y'all found something, not found him. Okay, but I guess what he's trying to say, like, I mean, you know what homicide is. Yeah, that y'all think that something happened to him. In, term, we think. in terms of? Um, as far as, like, him being harmed. Or? Dead. Yes. Okay. Okay, and I mean, that's ultimately why we're here, which is why we talked to you yesterday and said this is a very serious business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's This isn't news that we want to give to anyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what we're trying to figure this out. We don't want to give that news. But we need, in order for us to not do that, we need to get the information correct. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're talking to you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we just need to try to figure out every, try to dig deep and try to figure out what, what else happened that night. There's some things, uh, there's some things that happened that you're not telling us, okay? And, and we have proof of those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something something very, very bad happened that night. Something very, very, very bad. Very bad happened mm -hmm. that night. Okay. And you you said something earlier. And I, and I didn't. You said something earlier about Gerard. You didn't think Gerard meant to hurt him. Okay. Well, you said that very early on. I didn't say he meant to hurt. I said I don't I, think he would, said, he, hurt he would ever hurt him. Oh, okay. That he would ever hurt him. Okay. Oh, okay. And, and <laughs> indicating that he would ever do something intentionally. Right. Okay. But I think we can we can sit here and agree that both of those, when I say both, Gerard and Jamel were probably upset with each other over what happened at the park. We've got Jamel going to the park embarrassing Gerard in front of other people up there at Gerard's own organization, which would make anyone upset. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on top of that, 
or combined with that, we have Jamel intentionally damaging some property of Jarrah's, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, what we don't want to see happen is for you to come in here and provide us with information knowingly that that information is not true and complete and factual mm -hmm. to your knowledge, okay? And I can tell you right now that we have information and we have evidence mm -hmm. that contradicts what you are telling us. Mm -hmm. We have witnesses that saw you interact with Gerard at the house while this is going on, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this, okay. okay? And I'm telling you that we have evidence to support that. Okay. okay, as part of our investigation, we look at a lot of different things, okay? That, that communication device you're holding in your hand right there is a valuable tool and source of information. We evaluate and we look at stuff like that when we are doing these investigations. There are some things that are very concerning on there. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm telling you this because what I don't want to see happen, Mrs. Studemeyer, is I don't want to see you go down a path that potentially has consequences for you and your children that are at home. Mm -hmm. Okay? I understand that you have to do what's in the best interest for you and what's in the best interest for your family. Okay? But you also have to do what's in the best interest for Jamel. Mm -hmm. Okay? At the end of the day, we want you to have the answers that you need and some resolution to this case. And in order to do that, it's going to take cooperation from everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, So it's a matter right now of whether or not your devotion is greater to yourself, Gerard, or your son who's missing. Mm -hmm. Or your two kids that you have. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. Okay, You've got to figure this out. Okay, Because I'm telling you right now, there is video surveillance all over that neighborhood, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. There are people in that neighborhood that personally know Gerard, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. They saw Gerard there, Mr. Studemeyer. They saw you interact with Gerard, okay? I'm not going to spoon-feed you everything, every bit of evidence we have, okay? Mm -hmm. At some point, I expect you to say, you know what? This is a position I didn't expect to be in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I never expected this to turn out the way it turned out. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, what happened, happened. There's nothing that you can do that's going to change it. There's nothing that I can do. There's nothing Gerard can do. Okay, But what we have to do is we have to collectively get together and we have to figure out what is going to be the best possible solution. How are we going to come to a mutual resolution here to fix this or repair this or get it back to where it's manageable by everyone? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm hmm Huh? Mm hmm Okay. So, there is a reason that the case was transferred to homicide. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't know of any other way to tell you this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jamel is dead. Okay? He's not coming back. That's, an, that's not an easy thing to tell a family no, member or a loved one. You found him? We have evidence that we have found during our investigation to tells us Jamel is deceased. Okay? But what is he in? So that takes things to an entirely different level now. Mm -hmm. We're no longer talking about a misdemeanor assault or a battery or something like that. Okay? Where is he at? That's something that I believe that you and everyone that was there is going to be able to help us with. Okay. I don't know how. I mean, you, I don't know how I can help you with that. Stacy, what, what's what's about to happen here? This is you're you're at one of the most important probably decisions of your life about to take place. Like Detective Holby said, you can you can decide whether your devotion is going to be to you. How do you know Jamel is dead? I'm very confident that Jamel is dead. Okay, I, I just told you, I'm not going to spoon feed you and hand you every piece of evidence that we have, okay? Because at some point, this is a two-way street. And here's what, and when, when I say that, this is what I mean, okay? You and I, we, have we ever, prior to yesterday, have we ever met before? Okay. So, it would be safe to say that we don't know each other, right? We have never had any personal interaction with each other. Where's Jamal at? That's what we want to know, Mrs. Studemeyer. Well, if you know you did, you just tell me where you at. 
And we believe that I believe that the people that were involved in this hold the key to that answer. And you can and help those us people. Get those are the people that are closest to you. Okay. But please, 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 don't allow yourself to get caught up in something that because of something that someone else did. How do I know what happened? How do I know what happened? If I was in, if I was in front of the house with Michaela, like how do I know what happened to him? Miss Dudeman, you've had some. If they came, the people involved in this incident. If they came, are very close to you. Okay, so how do they? How how? If he's if something happened to him in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. where is he? Because they came and they checked they checked the water, okay. they checked the let's, woods. Let's let's do this, okay? Let's get back to my what I was trying to explain so to you. You don't know if he did or not. I do. Okay. How did Gerard leave that night? How did he leave your house? Can you tell me that? What mode of transportation or how did he leave your house that night when this happened? I don't know. You do know, okay? You're just trying to protect I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm just, I just, I'm just fixing to go. You said I could leave at any time. Just, I think we're beyond that point. No. Okay. Here's, we need to, we need to get these details ironed out. How did he leave that night? Okay. You need to do this for Jamel, okay? Despite your differences, you said earlier, you're his mother, you're always going to be his mother, you're always going to be there for him. Yeah, but I don't believe you. He needs you to be there for him. He need, Jamel needs you right now. He needs you, okay? Do you honestly think... Do you honestly Why do you think it's in, in homicide now? Why do you... I mean, there's a reason why Detective Tomberg isn't the lead detective on this case anymore. Advice. That's the information that we're we're gonna go through. There's information that you're you're not you're not telling us. We know that's true. We want you to help us. We want to help you. We do. That's literally why we called you down here. We have to give notifications of death to people all the time, and it's not it's the worst thing. It's the worst part of this job. This is not something that we look forward to. Yeah, but y'all do that when y'all know when y'all found the body. Not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. That's, I think that's um, the CSI factor, or the, the CSI effect. That's the effect that these little crime shows that they put on TV has on everyone. Everyone sees this Hollywood production and feels like that's the way it happens in real life. That is I'm not even remotely close to that. What else would explain that Jamel has... He's pretty much fallen off the face of the earth. He hasn't contacted you. He hasn't contacted Michaela. He hasn't contacted family in Ohio. He hasn't come home. You see that? You know what that is? That is a surveillance picture of Gerard Studemeyer with a bat walking down the street going to attack well, your well, son. Right. You're standing on the front porch of your house. Okay? That okay, is so Gerard... That is Gerard Studemeyer so how do I know going happened? to physically attack your son. So how do I know? So how do I know what happened to me if I'm standing on my front porch? Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Well, let's go back. Let's back up just a step. Okay. Initially, you said Gerard wasn't there. Gerard was there. You know that, and I know that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So let's work through this just a little bit at a time. Okay. Can we agree to do that? Okay. We will be as straight with you as you are with us. Told you yesterday. We're not, I'm not, neither one of us are the kind of people that we're not going to jump on the table, kick, scream, fuss at you and all that. Okay, that's not how we do business. Okay. This is a very, very serious matter that we need to work through. And we're going to need your cooperation. You're going to need our cooperation. We're going to have to work together. Okay. But you also need to understand that there are very, 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 very serious consequences for providing false information, intentionally withholding information, or obstructing an investigation as it relates to murder. Okay? If the police stop you for a minor traffic violation and you give them false information, you're going to get a, there, there's potential for a, a, a very small consequence. Okay? But would you agree that murder is at the, at the pinnacle of the crime tree? 
We're talking very serious stuff here, okay? Which also holds very serious penalties and consequences. We don't want to see that happen to you, okay? Let, let help us work through this, okay? Why are you so protective over Gerard being there that night, okay? We agree that Gerard was there, okay? And we know that Gerard was upset. We agree on that, okay? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And ultimately, he had a reason to be upset. I mean, in terms of what happened at the ballpark. Mm -hmm. But we need to figure out what happened after that. He can be upset because someone damages his vehicle, but that doesn't give anyone a right to do anything past that other than call the police and report it like he's supposed to. Mm -hmm. Some things got out of hand. I don't think they set out to do great bodily harm to him. I don't. I think some things got out of hand. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, but what, what... What what got out of hand and what happened? What happened to Jamal? Well, first off, there were there were four people, not three, okay. chasing after Jamal. They weren't walking down the street; they were chasing. Jamal. And you know the four people. Well, I don't know. I don't know who was running. I don't. I, mean, I didn't see anybody running. Who's this? Me. Who's that? Mm. You don't know him. Mm. Did you see him that night? Yeah. You saw him that night. Okay. But you don't know. Don't look, no, I don't know. But you saw him that night. Mm. You were gonna say he doesn't look what what before no, I interrupted you. Look, no, he just don't look like what I saw. But Is yeah. his hair different now? Is that what you're saying? Okay, what's his hair look like now? Or what did his hair look like then? Um, it's like pulled back. I mean, it was pulled back. I don't really so know. So still braided. I, really I mean, I only saw him like for a second. Is it still, still braided? I think so. Okay. All right. So, so here's a couple people that we've talked to because guess what? I mean, these this is no surprise to us because guess guess who all these people talk to? Mm. Detective Tomberg. Okay. Okay. Because these are the people that said that they were there that night. Okay. Okay. So. That guy. That guy right there. That guy has not been talked to Detective Tom, has not talked to Detective Tomberg. Oh, okay. And these okay. three have. Well, who is he? <laughs> That's our job. We know who he is. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so so he spoke with Tomberg, Detective Tomberg, mm -hmm. and then... He said he was there. He said he was there. He told me he was there. Mm -hmm. So then when we asked you yesterday... But you're going to lie for him. You know, we asked you yesterday, if you, if you talked to him and you said, I don't know, and we asked you if you saw him that night, and you said, I don't think... I, no, I didn't. I didn't see him that night. But, I mean, this isn't groundbreaking stuff. This is him talking to to the police the next day or two days later when when the missing persons unit got involved okay. and then he provided the tip with these two with these two people's names and then he called them and then he spoke with them and they all said that they were there okay okay and then and then this is going to be the fourth person that was there so i mean that none of this stuff is you know it's i mean that's what we we don't want you to get wrapped up in some for just and get wrapped up in a stupid lie to protect him when you should be a grieving mother. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Your job here is to be upset that someone may have hurt and killed your son, Jamel. Yeah, but y'all don't know for sure Jamel did. Yes, we do. We have. Okay. Jamel's not coming back. What makes what makes you believe that he's not dead? Because that man helped raise you know, he would I don't think he would hurt him like that. Not to kill anybody. What has Gerard told you about what happened? It's the same thing, I mean I mean, put yourself in put yourself in our shoes. You have an altercation with your and Jamel at the ballpark and that you know, for two days in a row. They they come to your house. How do they know to come to your house? So they knew he lived there. They knew he lived there. Okay. Um, How did they know he was going to be there? How did they know? He wasn't there. Huh? He wasn't there. Okay. How did they know when he was going to be there? They didn't. They didn't so they were there. Him. Were they there before he got there? Yeah. When he got there. So why did why why is there four people at your house at ten o'clock at night? They wasn't in my house at ten o'clock at night. I was. Why were they at office. your house? I don't know. I don't know. He said he was going to talk to Jamil. He said he wanted to talk to him to see why, what he could do to stop him from um, coming to the uh, park. With four people? 
I mean, you, you I mean, you're not going to you. Sure. Order. But I'm just, I was just trying to put you, put yourself in our shoes. I mean, there's, I mean, you're an adult, I'm an adult, he's an adult. We can have adult conversations. But why, I mean, why is there, obviously there, there's, you know, the old saying that, you know, there's, there's power in numbers. Yeah. Well, so. I don't know. Like I said, I was upstairs working and, um, Jamil, like I said, Jamil came in and he was like, I went to the uh, top of the stairs. He started talking. Now, if them, if they came in after him, if they came in after him, then that's something different. Came in your house. Mm -hmm. So you would have known if people came in your house. Yeah, I would. I would have known. Did you? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's stop beating around the bush. Let's be adults here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's establish the first thing. Why are you lying for Gerard to begin with by saying he wasn't there? Let's get that out. Let's let's overcome that initial obstacle. I don't know. I guess because you have got other kids you have to still raise. Okay. But so do you. So do you. Okay. And you're... He you got, are... You gotta help me raise him. Sure. Okay. What are you gonna do if both of you go to prison for a long time? Because both and of you are lying... To, because you're, you're already lying during a murder investigation. You've already lied to us. We've proven you've lied. You've admitted you lied. We want you to help us. We want. We need this you is, to help. This is your time to, to help us. You're not going to get many more of these conversations. So that's what I was trying to explain to you that you need to have a you need to make a determination right now whether you're going to stick up for him or stick up for you. Because ultimately, I mean, it's going to affect you, but it's going to affect your other two kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who do they depend on more, Gerard or you? Me? They live with you, right? They cook. Do they? Do you cook for them? Mm -hmm. Do you clean them for them? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not saying I'm not saying he's not a good father, but ultimately, if they're living with you, you're their sole provider. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously, he's gonna be their father no matter what happens. But if they're living in your house, you have control over them, and you have authority over them, and you can you. They're looking to you to be that person. Now, you said Ronnie's how old? 12? Mm -hmm. Okay. 12 years old. I mean, Gerard is 18. Mm -hmm. He's almost he's almost there. But 18 is a pivotal age. They need. They still need guidance. I mean, look at Jamel. You said Jamel kind of fell off the path, right? He started getting into some fights. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want that for, for Ronnie, would you? Mm -hmm. So I think you really need to dig deep, deep, dig deep inside you, and help us come to the determination of what happened. Let's bring him home. We need to bring Jamal home. That's the ultimate goal. Here. You said he's not coming home. Huh? You said he he's not coming home a lot, but he still deserves a homecoming, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. It will never change the teacher's son, no matter what happens. I mean, you and Gerard aren't even married, right? Mm -hmm. you're, are you officially divorced? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, he, all the, you know, he may be a problem child, but he's still your child. Mm -hmm. Okay, obviously you and you and Gerard. I don't, I don't have a problem dealing with him. I can deal with you now. Sure. I can deal with him. I've sure. been dealing with him for 23 years. Absolutely. So that's not an but, issue. But here's the thing. He, he's a problem, but I can deal with it. But here's the, here's the thing. Why why are you letting Gerard get in the way of what's going to happen to your life? Someone who you guys have already split, already divorced, and someone who we believe is responsible, is responsible for, his for his death. Mm. That's this is big news. Mm -hmm. We want you to help us, but we can't do that without your help. And in order for you to do that, you need to be as truthful with us as much as possible. I know you already haven't already, but like Detective Hulby said, this is this is a big deal. There's no other higher crime than murder. That's it. I mean, that's the top of the food chain. Killing somebody is the ultimate crime. Now things happen. We don't know what happened. That's what we're trying to figure out. But all we do know is happening is that 
Two men was last seen running away from four people. And then those four people came back. Then Jamel's not there. You live in a small neighborhood that's mm -hmm. closed off to a bunch of trees. Mm -hmm. It's not like he could have ran across into a major interstate or something like that and hooked a rod on them. You know, it's a it's off the beaten path. And you can get to interstates pretty quickly, but it's it's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know what I mean? That like it just it doesn't add up. Something happened to Jamel that night. I already told you there's video surveillance all over the entire neighborhood. Mm -hmm. If Jamel ran off, once he ran behind that house, he never came back. He never came back. And you know that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we got we got more than this in the video. The video shows more stuff, but I mean, look at that. The video is much more clear than the picture that prints. That is a metal that. baseball bat. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. What is the name of Gerard's uh, baseball organization? Or better yet, before you answer that, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what I think the name of his baseball organization is, mm -hmm. and I want you to tell me if I'm correct. Is it LCS? Is that the Athletic Association? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know how I know that? Because the video is so good that I can read it on his shirt. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't print very well because this is not photo paper, mm -hmm. okay? There's no question in our mind that that is Gerard Studemeyer, your ex-husband, and Jamel's ex-stepfather, okay? Who was that again? It's those four people. They're in the video. We see Jamel. Stacy, help us bring Jamel home. Please. Okay. You can't. Uh, you're, you're fighting. Mom. You're fighting it right now. I can see it in your eyes. You're his mom. You how do I know how? To... Okay. So when he left Let's be that street, so if you see surveillance, do mm -hmm. you see that he left when he left mm -hmm. when they left mm -hmm. that street mm -hmm. and went wherever he went at? You said he went in the backyard. Mm -hmm. He went behind the house. Well, behind somebody. Because not my he was, house. Because he was chased. But not my house. Correct. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when he did that. And how can I bring him up? I mean, how can I know where he went? I find it, I'll tell you what I find right now is that I am puzzled by the fact that you are able to smile and think about this as it, it's somewhat entertaining to you. No, rather than you, looking at this in terms of no, it's not entertaining a grave all. loss of your son. But okay, something tragic happened that night. And, but you're saying and I that I can help you, that I know I what do. happened. No, absolutely. absolutely. We do think you can. I, I do think you can. And that's okay? what... Because out of, out of all the three people in this room, mm -hmm. who was the closest person to Gerard Studemeyer? Me. Okay. Gerard Studemeyer shares details, intimate details of his daily life with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. You have two kids in common. Mm-hmm. You have a you have, have a two bond. kids in common with him. You guys have a bond, just, forever bond, with the children. He's going to share intimate details with you about what happens. Okay? In addition to that, you provided him with a means to get out of the area that night. Okay? So essentially, you helped him get away with what he did. Gerard didn't leave with those other boys, did no. he? How did he leave? The BMW? Okay. Why do you think it's sitting at the sheriff's office? Because they think that somebody Jamel was in there. Because it's part of the it's part of the crime. Okay, but was Jamel in the car? No. But so I'm, I'm not understanding. So I had, wait, so you're saying okay. I'm not understanding. How did Gerard get him come in possession of the BMW? He told me to get him the keys. Okay. So I gave him the keys. Sure. But I'm trying to figure out why he said get him the keys to the car. He needed a car. I, I don't know, know why he needed need a car. Need well, because they all came in one car. But he, he asked. Need a car. But he asked you for that car, right? Yeah. Okay. Why would he ask you for a car? He didn't need a car because he could have left with whoever he was with. 
So <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm lost as to what you're trying to get at. He 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 asked me for the keys to the car. I gave him the keys to the car. So was Jamel in the car? Is that what you're saying? Jamel was not in the car. Okay. 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 But he took the car for a specific reason. For what reason? Well, he put something in the car. Remember, there's cameras everywhere. He put that bat in that car. Bought a bat. Mm-hmm. But that, I mean, that, he could have put that in any car. He could have put that in. He could have. Your, so you saying that? So you saying that something, something was on the back? Remember what we said earlier about we're not, I'm not gonna screen feed you and give no, you every little thing we got. Look, listen. The bat doesn't. I'm listening the, to you. The bat doesn't matter. matter. Trust, trust me. We're, while we're, we're trying to explain to you that, you've got to realize that Gerard is involved in this. Someone was last seen being chased by somebody with a baseball bat. Right. Those four guys come back without the other guy they're chasing. Okay. Yeah. And that bat is then placed in the car, and then they leave. Put yourself in our shoes. What does that look like to you? What is it? Honestly, just... Did he do something with the bat? To who? I'm saying to Jamil. Yes. Yes, Ron and his friends beat your son to death. With a baseball bat. With a bat. I don't think they meant to do it. Beat him to death with a bat. Okay, but where did they do that at? Huh? Where? Behind the houses. Okay. Okay. So, this is my question about that. So, if they beat him to death with a baseball bat, mm -hmm. then where's? I mean, was there blood? Was there clothing? Was there anything that was back there? There's other evidence that tells us that his body was moved from there. Oh, what? Okay. So, how was his body moved from there? Was it was put in the car. Until until you start. Coming around with some, I'm not spoon feeding you and giving you every piece of evidence, okay? Because I'm not trying not. to be ugly, but I'm telling you right now that we have evidence. Have I not shown you already evidence that we've got in this case? I mean, but that's just, just surveillance of people in the streets. That you don't have nothing that says somebody beat this this young man with a bat. We have witness statements. There's witnesses. Witnesses that saw him beat somebody with a bat. Okay. I mean, can can a witness can a witness only be used for something they see? I, I, Can you hear yeah. something and be a witness? Yeah. What does that tell you? Okay, but if if you heard him screaming, I could have heard him screaming if I was standing on my front porch. Mm -hmm. But I didn't hear anybody. But mm -hmm. you also could have told us the truth that the Gerard was there and you chose not to do that. So, this is where we're running into the issue here. Okay, you're in denial right now. You're in denial that he could be capable of doing this. That's understandable, okay? Because you're worried about losing somebody that's going to be able to help you care for your children. So like I told you before, what happened that night? Huh? What, what is, is that? Uh -huh. uh, there's nothing you can do that's going to take back the events of that night. There's nothing at all, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, something very tragic and very bad happened. And okay. it, so, so if you put the... Um he put the, um... I'm, listen to me. You can try no, to figure this no, out I'm all you want, or you can just tell us what happened. Because I, I don't know. I promise you I don't know. I, I was not... Okay. So, he asked me for the keys to the car. I didn't think anything of that. Because, mm -hmm. like I've said, I'm saying to... Like I said, I'm I'm not thinking anything because I'm saying to myself, I'm, I'm thinking to get this car mm -hmm. while police here before Jamel come back. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I'm thinking that Jamel coming back. Mm -hmm. So if he put the, I mean, it's a lot of bats up there at the park. So if he put the car in the bat, I mean, in the, the bat in the car. Okay, whatever. I mean, ask me whatever you want to ask me because. Let me see the, the text, the last text that he sent you. Oh, Jamel. Jamel. Did your... Oh, let me see this first. So he, 
he's sending us one, you're sending that one. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. What is I mean? What is what is that one in reference to? I guess, like I said, he. I guess, he, like I told you before, he think that he running my house, so he think that I'm listening to whatever he's saying for me to do, or he's he thinks he's telling me to do stuff. I guess. Okay. Did Did Gerard text you that night? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Do you have those? Oh, uh, yeah. I have a lot of texts, though, so it, it'll take a moment to go do it. Do you remember what you guys talked about when he texted you that night? Do you what? Mm -hmm. um, no, I don't remember what he texted me. Was it about Jamel? Mm -hmm. I'm When's the last time you had a conversation with Gerard about this present situation? Um, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Okay. When's the last time? Did you talk about it today? Mm -hmm. What did you guys talk about today? Well, about this situation? Huh? No, I told him that I had an appointment to come down. Okay. And what, he, what was his response to that? And he just wanted to um, tell me some, give me something to think about. Okay. So what did he instruct you to do when you came down here? What did he tell you to say? Did he give you a script oh, no. to come down here and tell us? No, you say anything? no, uh-uh. No, he never told me. He never told me. He just said, I want to give you something to think about, but he just never told me. And what, no, what was he trying me. to tell you to think? What did he want you to think about? I don't, I don't, I don't, he said he wanted to tell me, give me something to think about, but he never told me exactly what he wanted me to think about. But no, he didn't give me any script or anything like that. Okay. I just told him that I, I had an appointment to come down here at 530. Okay. At any point, has he ever asked you to tell us something? to help protect him, as if he was not there or not involved in this? No, he never told me to tell y'all that he wasn't there. Okay, so you did that on your, so you came in here and intentionally lied to us on your own accord, I didn't right? intentionally lie to you all. I mean, I, I, what I, would you call I it? wanted to say that he, that he was there, that I, that I, you know, but I just... But how many times were you given an opportunity to say that, but you didn't? Does that, you know what I mean? Put yourself in our shoes. I wanted to win the lottery, but I have yet to do that. I truly don't think you understand how serious this situation is. Do you realize you can go to prison for lying? Me? Yeah. Well, I'm telling you how it should now. What else you want to know? We want to, we want to know what happened. We to just you. we just want you to help us. That's all we want Touch you to do. Okay. Okay. I'm here. And you are here, but you're not. We are giving you our commitment to do the very best we can to bring Jamel home. We're not getting your commitment in return because there's more information that you know that you're not sharing with okay. us, well, ask and we're able to prove that. Ask me. Okay. Okay, let's start with the conversation yeah. between you and Gerard. Do you on have those matches pulled okay. up? Okay, let's start with this. Okay. We executed a search warrant. Okay. Okay. On your messages mm -hmm. and Gerard's messages. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can put your phone down for a second. That way you can you can have my we can have each other's undivided attention. Oh, you want me to pull up the messages? No, I've got I have the messages oh, right okay. here. You can just put your phone. Okay. Just put them right. Put it right there for me. Uh, is there? There's nothing recording on this or anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can I just verify that? Okay, that's all. I'm gonna. I want you to take a look at these. Okay. okay. I want you to help explain some of those messages that are on there. Okay.
Or can I just turn it off right now? We'll turn it back on. Is there anything on there that you think could be problematic for you? Yeah, there is. You damn right. You set your own son up to get his ass whipped. And something bad happened. Okay. Now, what does that make you? That makes you part of it. Stacy, you got two options right now. Okay. One is to try to get out in front of this thing. I want you to. I want you to picture yourself right now. You know what a train trestle is, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Okay. What's the only means of escape on a train trestle? Mm -hmm. Well, what is a train trestle? Essentially, it's a bridge, right? A train tracks mm -hmm. over a that's extending over something, mm -hmm. whether it be a body of water, uh, a deep gap, mountain, whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got one or two options, right? You can move. Just because I said the kick is behind, that don't mean that's just the kick is behind. That's the, that's first of all, Gerard is a uh, uh, was a father figure to him. He could. He I agree. Kick behind. I agree with that. I so, completely agree with that. So for me, for me to say that, if he's sitting here around here, he disrespecting me. He need his behind kick. Okay. He need his behind whip. But not. We don't but disagree not with that. Back to the point that we don't disagree okay, with so that. So don't sit here trying to make me feel like things got out of hand, Stacy. Okay, but you're trying to sit here making me seem like I caused this whatever to happen. You participated by letting them know what time he was coming home by calling him. You facilitated. You helped facilitate. No, that. I didn't help facilitate because when I called him, he didn't answer. Okay, but you're feeding Gerard that information. You're feeding Gerard information what time he's going to be there. Okay. Okay. From, from what so I understand you're facilitating now, that. From what I understand now that I need to get me an attorney. Basically, you're telling me that I need to get me an attorney. I'm not telling you that. That is a personal decision that you need and to that's make. What I'm, that's what I plan okay. on Okay. All right, that's fine. So, you can sit here. We're seizing your phone as evidence. Okay. I mean, you um, see, you're trying no, no. to make me feel like, no, we're not. feel like... Can um, you put your other stuff up here for me, for just a minute, please? I'm just gotta make sure you have something. I just wanna make sure nothing's up. Okay. No weapons or nothing? So what, you've been arresting? Yeah. I don't wanna be arrested. Okay. I'm sorry. We can't talk to you if you request an attorney. Okay, I don't want an attorney. If, if you decide, across. if you decide just otherwise, then you can knock on the door and you can let us know, okay? I did. I huh? out. I don't wanna get arrested. That's, I, I, I can't, I can't have that to, I, I can't use that as a means well, of I don't get arrested, persuasion so you for you to, no, you're not persuading. we need to understand, I need you to understand that you have to talk freely and voluntarily. There is nothing I can do, and I'm not trying to persuade you to talk to me. Yes, okay. You're no, I'm not. Me. No, we're not. No, we're not. This is not a game. You are, because you're basically making me feel like. Okay, I, let me tell you this. Okay, we're going to step out for a couple minutes. Just I want you to collect your thoughts. Here, just, just, just collect them. And we'll come back. Them. We'll come back and no, we'll readdress. Would you like a bottle of water or something to drink? No. Nope. We will come back and give us just a minute. I'll be right back. When we're right back, just give us a knock when you're ready. I said that I'm ready. Just give us a minute. Well, just give us a couple minutes. Think it over. We'll come back and talk to you. Thank you. 
messed up bit. I just left it out there, so it's less of a distraction for all of us. Okay, you want to see where it is? I'm more happy to show you where it is. Just literally put it on a chair. Right a chair sitting right here. There it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. you and preserve your rights and protect us we need to go back through this form and i'm going to tell you why okay because when we finished up here you told us that you wanted to talk to your lawyer right mm -hmm. did you say yes or no yes okay but prior to us leaving you said you had changed your mind is that correct yeah I, okay if you could just do me one favor mm -hmm. you see all this gray hair i got mm -hmm. my hearing is not real good Okay, so you can just speak up just a little bit for me. Okay, yes. so we're going to have to go back through this. But before we go through this, I want to make sure that you have made a conscious decision on your own without any type of coercion, threat, duress, anything like that, that you are willing to freely and voluntarily talk to us or continue talks with us without a lawyer. Is that correct? Yes. It, it was that a yes? Yes. Okay. okay. So just to make, uh, I just want to, I want to be sure, like I said, this is for your protection and ours, okay? I want to make sure you're not doing this because we have promised you anything, correct? Correct. Are you doing this because we have threatened you? No. Okay. Are you doing this because you want to do this freely and voluntarily? Yes. Okay. This is a decision that you have made on your own. Yes. Okay. Are you currently under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that could affect your decision making or your judgment? No. Okay. Are you prescribed medication or advised by a physician to take such medication or anything else that could potentially have an effect on your decision making? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's nothing that you should be taking or a doctor has told you to take that you're just not taking for whatever reason, whether it be a personal reason, whether you don't have access to it or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to go back through this again mm -hmm. and then we'll continue with where we left off. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for purposes of the form, the top line says the place where we are. I'm, we abbreviate that PMB. That stands for Police Memorial Building. Okay? Today's date is May the 23rd, 2018. The present time is 727. We use military time. That is 1927. Would you please do me a favor and read this sentence out loud? Yeah, the following rights under the United States Constitution. Okay. You do not have to make a statement or say anything. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Just a verbal acknowledgement, a yes or a no, please. Yes. Okay. Anything you say can be used against you in court. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You have the right to talk with a lawyer for advice before you make a statement or before any questions are asked of you and to have the lawyer with you during any questioning. Do you understand that? Yes. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed for you. It's hard for me to read sideways, I'm sorry. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. Do you understand that? Yes. If you do answer questions, you have the right to stop answering questions at any time and consult with a lawyer. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Same form we did last time. If you would just put your signature on here, Signature is not any type of admission of guilt. It's acknowledging that we have reviewed this form and that you understand it. And you are willing and agree to speak to us without an attorney being here. Okay, but I have one question. Okay. Am I under arrest? Yes. So you will, so I am under arrest for what? Um, right now, it's accessory after the fact of murder. How do you... Okay. We can go but, through this and get. But we're gonna we, we can work through this, okay? But we're getting back to the. We need to get back to before we get to details again. I'm not to the point where I can discuss details, mm -hmm. okay? But there there are things so that I'm under arrest, so it is no reason for me to sign anything, right? That's entirely up to you because there are still things that you can do to improve your situation. Well, you basically remember the ultimate goal here, okay? But. We can't talk to you until you tell us that it's okay to.
this is our ultimate goal. Bring in your baby home. Okay. Let's start. What is what is on this piece of paper here? Mm. Nothing? Mm. Okay. This is representative of a blank canvas. Okay? Mm -hmm. Blank piece of canvas. We're getting ready to create a piece of artwork here. We're going to get ready to paint a picture. Okay? A picture that you're going to be able to help fill in and paint a clear picture of what happened on the evening of March the 6th, 2018. Okay? But before we do that, we're going to go through a couple things that we went through previously. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste any more of your time going through any of those things. Because it took us a while to get through some of those. Okay? And so some specific things I'm going to go on is, can we agree that you came in here and you told us lies about what happened that night? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. And why did you lie to us? Like I said, because Javon needed to raise his kids. Okay. What did you lie to us about? About him not being Okay. What else did you lie to us about? About him not being there. What else, though? That's it. How about what happened while he was there? Because you can't sit here and tell me that Gerard has never told you what happened when they chased Jamel behind that house. You, you cannot sit here and tell me that. Said, I mean, this is what he said. He said that they chased him around the house. I mean, he even came back to the house and Michaela said the same thing. She said, he, he said, um, he got away. So when all he said to me is, is that they, they went down the street. He ran behind the, we ran behind the house, and he, they ran, he, they chased him, but he they, they couldn't even catch him. That's it. Were you out there when Jamel came back down the street taunting them, and no. they chased him a second time? I don't think so, because when, when I saw it, when I saw it, and if you have no surveillance, that's fine, but when I saw it, they was going down the street. Mm -hmm. I never seen him come back down the street. Okay. I never seen him come back down the street. No. And it was on the opposite side of the street when they went down the street, and mm -hmm. that was it. Were you outside for any of this? When they, when they, yeah, I was, because I stood outside, like I told you, and I, the porch light was on, I believe, and that's when he said, you gonna die tonight? Then he was, tell, you know, telling the people they was gonna die tonight or whatever, and then he saw me standing outside, and he was like, I'm gonna die tonight too. And that was it. And then they went down, and like I said, I was back and forth in the house, and... That was it. So the only thing he told me is they got away. He got away. But what has he told you since then? That's it. The same thing. I Especially mean, I, this is important. Okay. I, this is very important. And I'm, you're I'm not, not telling the truth. You're not telling us everything. Yes. Okay? Yes, I am. You're not. The only thing he has, like I said, he's told me. Remember, he's told me. This is our goal. Yeah. Bring him home. Okay. He has told me that he got away. That's, he, he didn't get got, away. Got away. He didn't get away. Okay. okay, but that's you're asking me what he's told me as far as this is concerned. Mm -hmm. And he told me they went down the street. Yes, ma'am. They went behind the house. And he got away. That's it. Do you believe that? I believe it, in, yeah. In your heart. In your heart, in right my now. Heart, do you believe that's heart, what happened? In my heart, I believe he got away because Jamel is not the type of person that's going to get caught up into no tangle with nobody. Not with multiple people. Stacy, there's four of them. That's okay. what I'm saying. He, he, he not the type of person that's going to get tangled up with four people. Well, let me ask you that. Is, is that fair? Is that a fair fight? If I have a, dif a difference or a problem with someone. No. Is it fair for me to bring three of my buddies to come handle my problem? No. Nope. So what does that look like? If I bring three of my, if, if you and I have a problem, right? Mm -hmm. And you and I, I am not capable of resolving the problem by myself. So I recruit three of my friends and I bring them with me. Mm -hmm. What does that look like to you? What would your perception of that be? 
What are you scared of? It? Like I'm scared of the person that I'm there to confront? <laughs> what else does it show? I mean, to me, it just shows that you're scared of the person that you're trying to confront. But, but what does that, what is that representative of? When I bring, when I bring that many people there, what am I, what is your perception of that? What do you think he's trying to achieve by doing that? Well, this is what he told me that he, he came to talk to him. That's what he told me. He, he wanted to talk to him and figure out why he keep coming to the park. But, I mean, I guess it's just so you can beat him up. You okay. You bring multiple people. Or, or do what? Harm. Okay, Harm. or do what? I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want you to use your own words, okay? But if I were to come at you with a crew of people, what would, how would you feel? If you came me with a crew of people, I would feel... I mean, I would be... I would wonder why. I would want to know why you came with a, uh, uh, a crew of people. Would you be concerned for your personal safety? Yeah. Okay. Don't you think Jamel at some point was concerned for his personal safety? When four grown men, well, one of which is his stepfather, who is armed with a baseball bat, yeah. are running wildly through the neighborhood chasing him. Because it wasn't, they weren't running, what they was doing is they was on the sidewalk over there. Mm -hmm. Jamel was face backwards talking, you know, talking, talking a lot of, um, I, and I don't whatever. disagree with that. And then the, the guys was just walking. I didn't see nobody running. <laughs> I didn't see nobody running. I just saw him walking mm -hmm. down the sidewalk. He was walking, but he was backing up. And then he was just talking. Okay. And well, the surveillance it. video clearly shows them running. There, like I told you, there's video all over the place. Okay. okay. Well, during the time that they was running, I couldn't have been out there. Because, like I said, when I saw them, they was walking down the sidewalk, and Jamel was turned around, okay. backing up. What other vehicles does, did Gerard have at this time? When this happened? That's it. Just the um, the Lincoln. Okay. And the Maserati. Just the Lincoln and the Maserati. Yeah. What vehicles does Gerard presently have? A truck and a Maserati. Okay. So he no longer has the Lincoln. Mm -hmm. What happened to the Lincoln? Well, because it's. I mean. Remember, remember what we I, said earlier. Yeah, I'm just gonna tell you that car. First of all, that car is was it raggedy. It's in the shop every. Week, remember, every two weeks. Remember what we said earlier? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the shop every week or every two There's weeks. There's records of that in the shop? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sure. What shop? Then, no, 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 no. He don't have it now. No, no, no. I know. What no. shop did he use to, to have work done on it? He used to take it to um the shop on um, Park Street, Park and Blending. Okay. All right. So what, what happened to the car? I want to hear I want to hear what happened to it. Uh, he, he said he needed a truck for the bar the park and more room and all of that. So he said he was gonna uh, scrap it or whatever. Um, you know, take it to one of those people. Like sell it to, you know, the junkyard. Okay. That's it. That's what he told you? Mm -hmm. So what did he, where did he, did he tell you where, what scrap you already took it to? No, no, I didn't ask because I knew that it needed to go to one. <laughs> I mean, I didn't ask because he, I know he needed a truck. He kept talking about, I mean, he'd been talking about getting a truck because he got the park and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then I guess when the window got bust out, I guess he decided he wasn't gonna get it fixed no more because he, I think he just got it out of the shop. When is the last time you saw that Lincoln car? Um, the next day. The next day. Mm -hmm. Where? When he was getting ready to go to um, downtown, he came by the house. Okay. So he came by the house and picked you up to, for y'all to go downtown. No, I or drove my car. You drove your car, mm -hmm. but he met you at your house. Mm -hmm. Do you remember about what time that was? Maybe 10. Okay. So, he drove the Lincoln that morning? Mm-hmm. Okay. And was the windshield intact that morning? Yes, yeah, it was, but it was like, it's busted. It was messed up. When you say messed up, how was it messed up? Like, busted out. Like, I don't even understand. Busted out as in, like, it wasn't there? No, like, it was, like, Busted. You know how somebody busts your car and you have like all of these shattered glass? Mm -hmm. It's like that. Correct? Yeah. So if he has access to another vehicle that doesn't have a... Because it's a work car. It's, it's my but you weren't going to work. You were going downtown. No. He he goes to work. He drives trucks. Mm -hmm. So he goes to work. He drives that Lincoln to go to work. Mm -hmm. Every day. So he met me downtown. Mm -hmm. I mean, met me at, my house, at the house. So we can go downtown. Mm -hmm. 
And then when he left from there, he went to work. But you don't know ultimately what happened to that car, other than he hasn't told you anything that he's done with the car, other than he intended to scrap it. Mm -hmm. take it not, not scrap it, but um, sell it to junk, you people that buy cars. Well, there's a difference in there, people that buy cars. You have yeah. used car lots, no. and then you have you know how the metal recyclers. Yeah, the people that buy them for like $300 or whatever. Okay. So, you junk yard. Has he done that before that you know of? Mm -mm. Okay, so you don't know which one of those he would have no. used. No, I don't know which one he would have used because he hasn't. The only car he's had that that um that uh, Lincoln he's had is since like two thousand ninety two thousand or something like that. Okay. So he's had so he's never had to scrap uh, never scrapped another car because okay. that's the only junk car that he had. Let me ask you this: mm -hmm. Has he asked you to come in here and say anything specific related to any vehicle that he owns? Has he given you instructions on what to tell the police about his vehicle? I want you to think very carefully about that. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Have you had discussions with him recently about this Lincoln car and what you would tell the police? Mm. About what I would tell the police about the Lincoln? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope. About what I would tell the police mm -hmm. about the Lincoln? Mm -hmm. Not that I can remember. Not that you can remember? No. Okay. You can help me out, but no. I could, I but you could also help us out. No, okay. I don't remember what I would tell the police about the Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Stacy, let's not. I'm trying to. No, I'm help. really trying to. No, I'm really uh -huh. trying to help you out, but I don't know what 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 I would tell the police about the Lincoln. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you physically saw Gerard? This morning. What or, time? Yeah, what time this morning? About five. About five? Five o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. Four o'clock, five o'clock. Have you spent a night at your house? No, he didn't spend the night. He came over at like... Four? Four o'clock? Four o'clock? Yeah, he, he goes to work early. Is that normal? Yeah, he goes to work. He's a truck driver. That's normal for him to come to your house at 4 a.m.? Oh, he's done it before. Yeah. No, I'm not asking if he's done it before. Yeah. Is that normal? Yeah, that's normal. Okay, so what was the, his purpose for coming over to your house at 4 o'clock this morning? Let's spend some time with me. Let's be honest. What, I am. What was the reason for him coming over? I had to spend some time. What does that mean? To get some. Okay. So, you, you're you still involved in a sexual relationship with him? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, I mean, he's the only man I've been with since. But, um, so, okay. Yeah. But is he still married? Is he married now? Has he remarried? Not that I know of. Not that you know of? No, he's not married. Not that I know of. Unless, yeah. unless somebody, I mean, no, I would say no. Okay. <laughs> so where does he live? He lives on um, Velvet Springs. Okay. Do you know who he lives there with? No. Hmm? Mm -mm. Are you and Gerard, do you consider you and Gerard to be kind of exclusive with each other, even though you don't live together? That you guys are... Um, I mean, we friends, and like I said, I don't really sleep around or anything, okay. so I'll sleep with him um, every night again. Okay. Um, because I don't sleep with anybody, but um, I don't know if he's, I don't. I mean, I don't know if he stays with somebody or is married to somebody, I don't know. Would that change things in your eyes if you, if you knew that? I mean, as far as sleeping with him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if he was married, would that change things? As far as sleeping with him, yeah. I wouldn't sleep with Mary Ann. Okay. Would it change things if he was sleeping with multiple other people and you had knowledge of that? Yeah, I wouldn't want that nasty. <laughs> I just want to share something with you. Just tell me if you recognize any of these people. Do you recognize any of these ladies? Mm -hmm. Huh? Guess what you and all these ladies have in common? They sleep and sleep with the same person? Mm hmm. Well, that's disgusting. Okay. The reason I tell you that is that.
Did you think Gerard was capable of doing something like this? Well, it's sleeping around? With that many different people? Not with that many. Without you knowing? Mm -hmm. Do you think Gerard's capable of killing your son without you knowing? Without me knowing? Mm -hmm. I mean, the only reason I think he wouldn't is because he raised, he, he helped me raise him. I understand he helped you raise him, Stacey. I understand that. And I also believe that he didn't mean to kill him. Him and those boys, they didn't mean to kill him. You know that. Okay? But things got out of hand. Mm -hmm. Remember your commitment to him. Mm -hmm. You gave birth to this boy. You're always going to be there for him. Yep. Bring him home. Give him what he deserves. I don't care how bad he acted that night or leading up to that night. He doesn't deserve to be left out somewhere. Who knows where he's at? Are you asking who? Mm -hmm. You know who. But I asked him that before. Because, Stacey, where is he? because I, <laughs> I asked him that. What did you ask? What did you ask him? What happened to Jamel? Okay. What type of response did you get? Well, first of all, the reason I asked him that is because you hear all of this. I'm not on social media. Okay. But I have my sister-in-law asking me, or my ex-sister-in-law asking me. You know, I have people asking me, like, you know, what happened or whatever. And I really can't tell them what happened because I really, like I said, I really honestly, truly don't know what happened to Jamel. So I asked him one day, I just asked him, what happened to Jamel? Like, what happened? And he basically said, well, I told you what happened. And I'm like, well, you know, y'all was the last people that I seen him. And so he was just like, well, I told you that, you know, he got away, whatever. He was running, he chased, whatever, and then he got away. That's it. And you believe that? You don't believe that. You don't believe that for a bit. You're trying to make yourself believe it right now. But you don't believe that in your heart. Right, but if they had the helicopters checking all the area, in the, the wooded areas. It's because he's not there, Stacy. They moved him. Okay, but how did they move? How? What car? That car. That's the Lincoln? Mm -hmm. That's the Lincoln. Can I see it? Y'all found anything in there? Where's Jamel? I don't know. Can you say he had a Lincoln? I did say that. I mean, well, obviously that's not in a that's not um at a a, sap, a junkyard. Correct. Where is that at? Let's get to my question. Where is he at? Um, what did they do? Honestly, 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 don't know. Stacy, that's your baby. I know. And I don't know where he at. Don't you want to know where mm -hmm. he is? Huh? Yeah. But I, like I said, I asked her, I said, what, what happened to him? Where is he at? And he said the same thing. He then said, he got away. You know, that's not true. Where would he go I to? I can't make him. Here's the thing. Look, it's, <laughs> it's a small residential community. They came, they, they came back and then left. You think if he was running away? Who came back? Gerard and the guys. They came back after walking. Where would, where would Jamel go? When did he come back while you were trying to figure this whole plane situation out? This community's not that big. I mean, think you got to think about this logically, Stacy. He's gone. But I understand that, that he's gone, but you're asking me something I don't know. Like, you're asking me where he at. Did he, did he burn in the car? I mean, did he burn in the car? I don't know that right now. Okay. But I know he's dead. And I need you and all the people that were there.
to help give him the proper homecoming he needs. All what people? The people who were there when this happened. Don't the people know. that know what happened. Like I said, I don't know. I have not seen them since they was going down, walking down the street. I have not seen him since he was walking down the street. And like I told you, like a little bit later, I asked him, I said... A little bit later as in what? The same night? No, uh, like maybe... Not the same night. It was like maybe a, maybe a couple of maybe a couple of days. I, I mean, I asked him, I said, where is Jamel? Like, what happened to Jamel? And... Um, he just keeps saying the same thing. He said he, uh, we went, we, we chased him around there, he went across there, he went behind the houses, and he got away. That's it. Who hit him with the bat? Who did he say, who did Gerard say hit him? Did Gerard say he hit him with the bat, or did he pass the bat mm -hmm. off to someone? Mm -hmm. He said, nope, he said, he said, if if he would have hit him with a bat, he said people think that we hit him with a bat, because I guess they on Facebook saying, you know, he got, he had a bat or whatever. So he's saying it's, it's, that's people, that's a fact, right? Yeah. That, that's not people yeah. saying that is yeah, something that actually what he's happened. Saying. He's okay. saying, well, people saying that on Facebook saying that um, if I had a bat, I would hit him. But if I would hit him with a bat, man, they said it'll be blood all over back there. You're back there, um, back there. They ain't find nothing. They not gonna find nothing because um, I didn't hit him with no bat. Or maybe because you took him away. Took him away and hit him with a bat. What you mean? Took him away and beat him with a bat? Mm-hmm. He was killed back there. You know how much he thinks about him? You know how good of a father he is and stepfather? Mm -hmm. He thought so much about him that he took him and dumped him like a piece of trash somewhere. That's that's what you're dealing with. That's the person that you're laying down what? and having relations with. What? That's how good of a father he is. And good, how good of a father figure he is. What did he do? That he places no value on life to be willing to do something like that yeah. to someone that he raised. But what did he do? I would love to know that. And he's saying, man, Stacy, I love that kid. I wouldn't help. I mean, he tell me this. He tell me, Stacy, I love that kid. I wouldn't um, hurt him. I, you know. Why, just why else would anyone be chased with a bat? Literally, I mean, just think of this as a as straight on. Why would you chase somebody with a bat, Stacy? Okay, well, at one point in time, y'all probably read the report where Jamel went to jail because of the bat. You read that? So did your so did your yeah, that's what I'm saying. Both yeah. of them they had they went to jail because okay. of a bat. Okay. But they, who's the, they who was the to, who was the father figure in that? Rod. Rod. You okay. think that was a good example of that? Mm mm. It wasn't a good example of that. And the thing about it is is that if I wasn't home at the time that they did that. So if he's if he's hit somebody with a bat before, you can bet he he'll do it again, right? Right, but right? They, they, yeah, but they didn't kill the guy. You know, they, they hit him. Well, but didn't. Like, apparently, apparently again, here we didn't. I don't think course. they set out to kill him either. I think they set out to tune him up. Your words earlier, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but your words earlier, he deserved to get his ass kicked, didn't he? Yeah, but not, I mean, he didn't deserve to get when killed. I say, when I say kick his behind, like, like when he dis was being disrespectful, even your child, when your child being disrespectful, I, come kick his behind. You know I what get I mean? it. I understand. First of all, I'm, I'm not going to kick his behind because Jamel is. You see how little I am. But you don't do that with you don't do that with a baseball bat. No, but I and I didn't say come kick his behind with a baseball bat or come kill him or come hurt him or whatever. So that's what I'm trying to. But he took it upon himself to do that. Is he that? Is Gerard that scared of Jamel? Mm -mm. So why does he feel the need to not only bring three of his big bad buddies from the ballpark, but also a baseball bat? Mm -hmm. Use some reasoning here. Mm -hmm. But you, but you asking me something that I don't know. You asking me where he at, and I don't know. Okay. Like, I really, truly don't know where he. Is. Like if I who do you think? Jamel, who do you think knows where Jamel is? Well, after seeing the car, not where I was told that it would be. Mm -hmm. I would say Gerard know where he at. Mm -hmm. It's obvious he's not being very truthful with you. So how can somebody burn a car like that and not the police not know? 
Like, y'all, I mean, the police don't see flames and smoke and all of this. Do we put out fires? If there's a fire, who do you call? A fire truck? Mm hmm. That put it out and didn't ask no questions? Again. Okay. This isn't so much about that, this is about him. Okay. This ain't going away. I still, I don't know where he at though. I mean, you can, you can ask me that a million I don't, times. I don't I think don't. you care where he's at, to be honest with you. I really don't. You don't because, think I care? Because if that was my child, I would be a wreck right now. No, I mean, this, <laughs> you think I don't care where you mail at? That's, that's, this is my, when you, this when is you my lie, second son. When you lie for someone, no, for the sake of, for the sake of raising, help, helping me raise some other kids. Mm -hmm. That tells me that you're, you're, you care more about him than you care about him. Stacy, you care more about Stacy than you care about him. No. Stacy, I spoke with you yesterday and I told you I, I work for the homicide unit mm -hmm. and we had information related to your son and you asked, I gotta go. Not one time did you ask. Is he okay? Him. Or. How about the several times? I did you, ask or, if no, you no. Found, I didn't ask you if you found if y'all found him. I didn't ask you that. What, but wouldn't you make it a priority to to stay here and talk to us yesterday with the information that, that I did. No, no I listen. Did talk to you're you. here for about forty five minutes. We oh, a team a team from missing persons to homicide says that we have them. We have information on Jamel. Wouldn't you want to know that as a mother? Exactly, yeah, and that's why I came down here. But I still have a light. I mean, I still have other things that I have sure. to do. I have still have priorities that I have to do. So I did come and sit down here and talk to you for forty-five minutes. But what about what about since then? How about Detective Tomberg said you called several times. You never asked about Jamel. You just asked about where's my where's my BMW. That's concerning, Stacey. No, that's because. I'm sure that if he know where Jamel at, then he will let me know. If they, if they, if the police officer, when the police officer found Jamel's father, they came and they let us know that. I didn't call down there or call or try to find him. They let us know. So that's why I know that if you find Jamel, you will come and I'll be the first for you all to let to know. That doesn't mean that I don't care. I definitely care about all my kids. I just don't know where he at. I cannot help you with that. I do not know. I put that on everything. I do not know where he at. After they, after they, he went down that street. I did not see him no more. Did Gerard ever tell you that they beat him and he wasn't moving after they beat him? No. He never told he you. He never that. told me that he, they hit him with anything at all. Okay. The only thing he told me is he got away. But you know that's not true, right? Now, you know that's not true. You knew, you knew it was bigger than this. Where does it all lead to? Jamel. I don't know. Who? Jamel. Who is the most, most culpable party in all this? Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. You think you know him. Does Rod own any weapons? Mm. Hmm? I do. You do? Okay. He doesn't own any firearms or anything. Mm. Is Rod scared of Jamel? No. Nope. Not that I don't know of. Okay. So how do we find Jamal? How do you think we can find Jamal? Won't you help me out? This is your job. Like you do this all the time. Mm -hmm. I do. So I don't know. Help me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to find him. So this is your son. Mm -hmm. It means a lot more to you than it does to us, or it should. But I don't know how to find a missing person. Like I don't. I... He's not missing. He's dead. Let me ask you this. 
Jamal, if I ask Jamal, he gonna tell me the same thing. If I ask him what happened to Jamal, he gonna tell me the same thing. Stacy, why are you asking me that? I don't know what happened to him. I told you that he ran. He got. He he got away. Were you given an opportunity to pass out flyers to help find Jamal? Um, no, I didn't know they posted this on. Um, or whatever they did. I don't really know how they did it. You were never contacted by mm -hmm. anyone mm -hmm. in reference to flyers? Mm -hmm. No, when I came home, I, one day I came home and I had a flyer in my, a flyer in my door. But okay. I just thought they just, um, like, you know, put it there or whatever. But no, nobody never contacted me about doing it. Okay. Did you read the flyer? Mm hmm Did you make any other independent efforts to try to go find Jamel, to check on him, to see if he was okay? to see if you could find it. I mean, I looked downtown, like, where, the, uh, you know, where, like on Main Street and mm -hmm. Main and uh, Force, not Force, um, Union, where all those people were at. Sure. I looked there just about every day, <laughs> oh. just to see if I could find them. Because, I mean, sometimes people... Mm. You're wasting your time looking there. I mean, I do, that's what I do. Oh. Maybe you should start looking up here. To find them? Mm -hmm. Y'all not helping me out. I mean, y'all are kind of like beating around the bush. I, I'm not like, beating around the bush. I, I believe we get, I look believe, at the stuff we just gave to you. We ain't beating around any bush. Like, how do I? I believe here to I find believe them? Gerard's dead. I mean, that your son Jamel is dead. I believe Gerard and his boys are responsible for it. And I also believe that at some point Gerard has shared with you what has happened to him. He may not have told you exactly where he is now or where what they did with him. But I darn sure think that he told you what happened behind that house other than the fact that he got away because there's no other explanation for why he would have, um... I swear to you, he never, he never said, the only thing he has said, I asked him specifically, I said, Gerard, what happened to Jamil? Mm -hmm. And all he said is, well, I told you that when we went back there, um, we chased him back there and he, he got away. Did you believe him, though, that he got away? At that point, and and again, I'm not trying to put words in your yeah, mouth. But did you I mean, I, at, yeah, at that point, I believe that he got away because Jamel is a fast person, a fast runner. Okay. And and Gerard, not he like he's you know, an he athletic dude. He's he, an yeah, athletic but guy. he's not fast like that. Like not like Jamel. Jamel way younger. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I did. I actually did believe that he got away. And then sometimes I look and say like maybe he maybe he um got to Braddock, you know, and went down Braddock or something and. Got to, you know, just I think of things like that. But and then when and then when they came and they searched back there, they searched the water, they searched, they did all, they had the helicopters, all of this. And I'm like, well, if he not back there, then you know. You know why he's not back there? Well, you said they took him. They did. But they took him before the police got there. The police came so fast. Yeah, they did. How, what time they came? I got video. Okay. Okay. What time? The police came and left. And they came they, one time and, and they came again. And then they came a second time because my came, the one guy came. Mm -hmm. So like how long ago like how long after did they come? Uh, the first time. I, I don't I've got the timeline, but it's probably thirty something minutes. And then and then and I know the second time they came it was a while. Mm -hmm. The second mm -hmm. time they Correct. came. But when he when he stopped by the first time, that I mean Stacey, we're not making, I think you, you know enough at this point that we're not making this stuff up. Yeah, I know okay? you're not making it up, but I There's still... There's no reason for us to fabricate evidence and make stuff up to try to get you all spun up over something, okay? But, at the end of the day, this is about him. Mm -hmm. But at, and at the same time, like I said... Just take us to him. Yes. Just take us to him. That's all we want. How do I do that? Honestly, how do I do that? How do I do that? Tell me. Either you know or Gerard knows, one or the other. So, you you think Gerard will tell me? I don't know, will he? No. I mean, I can ask him. So, Gerard cares that much for him as a, Gerard I mean, cares I that much him. about him as a father figure that he's willing to just dump him who knows where, like a piece of garbage. Okay, I can ask him. I mean, but I know he, I didn't ask him before. I didn't ask him where he at. Gerard's days are numbered, okay? Guess who is not going to be around? Who? Mm -mm. Who, me? Him. Oh. Okay. 
Gerard's not going to be a free man here for, for too much longer. Okay? The walls are closing in on Gerard. It's, that, it's just slowly, 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 slowly. Two and a half months of worth of work. Okay? It's just right here. Gerard's world is just caving right now. And you know that. Yeah, you know that because what's Gerard's demeanor been like the last couple of days? He been like, but well, he been said that before. He was like, um, I'm thinking about what he said. What he said, I got so much going on, and I'm thinking about. I'm trying to what he said. Um, something, something he said, but then he's just like, um. He, he got to talk to me about the kids and how, you know, how, how I'm raise the kids and stuff like that. Why is he telling you that? Because he said, um, they think that I did something to Jamel. That's what he said. He said, they think that I did something to Jamel and, um, so I want to, I want to sit and talk to you about how you're going to raise the kids by yourself. And today he was like, um, he can't eat and just things like that. Isn't that odd to you? No, he, he said it before. He didn't say it before. But isn't that odd for it? It's almost like he's he's giving wishes of, it's almost like a proclamation of before somebody dies. You're trying to take take care of all their last, last details. Mm -hmm. He's doing that because he knows he's going to be going to prison. He's, he is ridden with so much guilt right now. Because what happened wasn't meant to happen. Like I said, it, it just went too far. Right? And there are ways that that could have been addressed and dealt with immediately that night to where maybe the outcome may have been a little bit different. Okay? I mean, heck, he could have, him or somebody that was there could have sought medical attention for him. Rather than just leave him laying there like a piece of trash before they came back and got him. Yeah. But how do we know where he is? I mean, now... I'm Somebody that's thing. very close to you has the answers. Do I? Mm hmm I mean, I don't know how to get it out of What makes Gerard tick? No, we're not. I mean, not no more. We're not, we're not like that no more. We ain't like that, so I don't know what makes them too. You guys were married for quite a while, but... Yeah, almost, I think, 15 years. That's a long time. You should still know some of these things. Hmm? You should still know that. Uh, I'm going to go back and just recap, start to finish, okay? Mm -hmm. When did things start getting really bad between Gerard and Jamel? When he, when he went to the park. Okay. I, I believe I recall a conversation we had yesterday. Mm -hmm. Did he go to the park on more than one occasion? Mm -hmm, twice. Okay. So this incident happened on the 6th, at the, the final incident involving Jamel in which Jamel was killed happened on the 6th. So did Jamel also go to the park on the 5th, mm -hmm. the day before? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you heard, you heard about the incident at the park from both Gerard and Jamel? Mm -hmm. Okay. At any point during the conversations you had either with Jamel or with Gerard, was there any mention of a firearm being involved? Oh, yeah, he said Jamil had one in his shirt. He said he did this. Who said that? Gerard. Gerard did? Okay. Do you know, have you ever seen Jamel with a gun? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, uh, his granddaddy, he brought one home from Ohio. He brought one home from Ohio? Mm -hmm. Okay. Jamel is a convicted felon, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. 
So you knowingly allow a convicted felon to possess a gun inside your house? Mm -mm. No, I told him to give, give it to me. So okay. he gave it to me. So that's the gun you have now? No, mm -mm. I put it in my drawer. And um, one one day, I was looking for my, my, um, my, my bullets. Mm -hmm. And the gun and my bullets was gone. Mm -hmm. What kind of gun is it? I have a 9mm. Okay. I don't know what the gun, that gun his granddaddy gave him was, but I told him to give it to me. He gave mm -hmm. it to me. I put it in my drawer, my nightstand drawer with my um, my bullets. I have my 9mm. I put that gun in there, and then I put my bullets in there. And um, um, I, I went to Savannah mm -hmm. in um, March for the... St. Patty's Day? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I put my gun in the uh, Mercedes, because I took it to the airport mm -hmm. to pick up a rental car. So I put my gun in there, and uh, I ended up leaving it. I took it out to put it in the rental car, because I didn't want to leave it at the airport. So I put it in the uh, rental car and left it in the rental car. So then um, I called um, the rental car people, and they said it was in St. John's County. So I had to drive to St. John's County, and um, I had to drive to St. John's County to get my mm -hmm. gun. And they took out, they took the bullets out because it's they right. whatever. So she was like, "You can come back within twenty four hours and get the bullets." So when I um when I, I was like, "No, I'm not, this is too far." I said, "Y'all can just keep them. I have bullets." When I came home, when I went home to look for my bullets, because my gun is empty right now, it's really no good. Um, to look for my bullets, the bullets and the gun was gone. When when Jamel came home that night, mm -hmm. raising Kane in the house. Mm -hmm. Who was inside the house with you? I, uh, it was me, my two sons, and Gerard was in the garage. Okay. Did Gerard have the bat with him then? Um, yeah, he did. Okay. What did the bat look like? Mm, I, I want to say it was maybe gray with black candle. I think. Okay. Was it a... Uh, your kids play ball, right? Mm -hmm. Both of them play baseball? Mm -hmm. Well, my 18 year old don't play no more. But, but he used to. Mm -hmm. Played quite a bit, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, you probably spent a lot of time at the ballpark. I used to. Okay. Probably pretty familiar with sports equipment, right? Mm -hmm. know, know that, clearly know the difference between a, a maple or a wood bat and a composite bat like they're using these days. Mm -hmm. What type of bat was it? Composite, composite bat. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you remember them? Model or no, I didn't, like that. no, I didn't see it like okay. that. Okay, that's fine. I didn't know if it was like a favorite bat that, no. that Ronnie used or something like that, and he just grabbed it. When Gerard came over, what was his purpose for going in the garage? He went in the garage when Jamel, um, Jamel came in, he went in the garage. Okay. When Gerard came in the front door, did Gerard have the bat at that point? Or did he, he retrieve a bat it. from the garage? No, he had a bat. So he came up to your front door with a bat. Mm-hmm. And you let him in the house with a bat? Oh, yeah, I let him in the house with a bat. And I said, well, what do you need a bat for? Mm -hmm. And what was his response? Um, he just was like, he was just like, well, I ain't, I'm not going to hurt him with it. I ain't going to hit him with it or nothing like that. And I was like, oh, okay, so what you, what you so need what you need a bat? That's, yeah. a, that's a very reasonable yeah. question. Why do you need so, a bat? Yeah, and that's why I'm like, Yeah, that was it. That was that was about it. I don't remember what else was said. Okay, so when we first started this conversation, probably more than two hours ago, mm -hmm. you lied to us and told us that Gerard was not in the house. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. It was just you. And the kids. Ronnie. And Gerard Jr. Right. Mm -hmm. Why lie to us about that? I told you, <laughs> like. Just basically just to say that, you know, I don't really, I mean, I didn't really want him to get in them trouble because he still got to help raise his other sons. I understand that. But who is responsible for the decisions that Gerard makes? He is. Okay. So why should you put yourself in jeopardy for something that he did? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Okay, you've got to look out for number one. Mm -hmm. You got to do what's in the best interest for you and your children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anyone else come in the house? 
Mm-hmm. At this point, Gerard's in the garage. Mm-hmm. Jamel comes in. Mm-hmm. Jamel's raising Kane when he comes in. What happens at that point? Um, I went upstairs. I went upstairs. Okay, so you were not already upstairs like you said before. No, I um, I went to the it opened open the door for him for Gerard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Asking, that's when I asked him, what you, what you got a bat for? Like, what you need a bat for? Mm-hmm. When well, he came in, so we was downstairs for a while. Then, um, that's when Jamel came in. No, he went. That's when Jamel came in. When Jamel came in. And you went into the garage. You went to the garage and I went upstairs. Okay. I'm going to back up for just a second because mm-hmm. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Okay. Before Gerard got there, mm-hmm. explain to me the conversation that took place between you and him by text. And I can show you the messages and we can go through them. But Gerard is asking you. At 21.49, which by military time, are you familiar with military time? Mm -hmm. What time is that? Um, 10, no, 9. 9.49. Mm -hmm. That's 11 minutes until 10 Mm o'clock. Okay. You send Gerard a message. Okay. This is your telephone number. Mm -hmm. Mm 904-982-2715. Correct? Mm -hmm. Gerard's telephone number. What's Gerard's telephone number? Yes, yeah, Okay. You send him a message asking him what? Okay. So you were expecting him to come over, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. Gerard's response? Yep. Gerard immediately, te- not immediately, several minutes later, Gerard texts you and says, What time do he normally get home? Mm hmm. Who is Gerard referring to there? Jamel. Okay. So he is asking you what time Jamel gets home. Mm-hmm. Why do you think he's asking you that? Um, so that he could see how long it's going to be for they have to wait for him. Okay. So it's your understanding at this point that Gerard is outside of your house mm-hmm. and he's waiting for Jamel to get home. Mm-hmm. And has there already been conversations between you on the phone? Of why he is outside waiting for him? He told me that he um he don't come over and talk to him. He okay. talked to him and see why he uh Okay, so you knew that he was coming over to confront Jamel about something. Mm-hmm. About something that happened at the park. Mm-hmm. Okay. So your response a minute later is that he is usually here at nine something. Mm-hmm. Right? Gerard immediately replies and asks you what? Okay. See what he had. Okay. So he wanted you to call him to find out what? Where he at, how long he's going to be. And how long he's going to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. What does this mean when you respond to him? When it says, okay. maybe scared to come. Yeah, maybe he's scared to come. Maybe he think that y'all already out there waiting on him to come. Because he okay. Did, did you call Jamel? I don't think so. You sure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did, and I have to get my phone. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that. Okay. But there's something that tells me that you did call him. So Gerard says at 22:28, which is now 10:30, Gerard's been here for 40 minutes mm-hmm. outside your house waiting. He says, "I'm tired of waiting." Mm-hmm. What is your response? Yeah, I'm gonna come in and wait. What does y'all imply? Because I knew somebody else was out there with him. Okay, so you knew that there was more than one person. Mm -hmm. You knew there was more than Gerard. Mm -hmm. Who, at that point, who did you know was with Gerard? Mm -hmm. No, I know him, but I don't know. I didn't know if he was he was coming unless unless Gerard told me. I don't remember him telling me that. Okay, but nevertheless, you knew that there was more than one person Mm -hmm. with with Rod, Mm -hmm. or or you knew that there was at least one or more persons Mm -hmm. with Rod outside. So he asked you if you're working, mm-hmm. which is a valid question based on what you've told us that you begin your shift at 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then your response is, no, I didn't think that would be smart. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. 
Mm, I don't know because I was working because I can I have proof that I was working. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just asking you because I don't know what that would. I, what know. That, I can mm -hmm. I can draw my own inference on what I think that means. Yeah. Um, but I would I was just curious what your interpretation of that and why that was phrased yeah, maybe that way. Because um, I don't know, maybe because I knew Jamel would probably come home with some you know noise and all that stuff like that. So okay. But um, so would, that remark was done, and again, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I was trying to understand. So that remark was sent, or that phrase was sent, or reply, however you want to word it, was sent to him. Because you anticipated some type of disturbance once Jamel got home. Mm -hmm. Okay. At 22.31, which is 10.31 p.m., mm -hmm. Gerard sends you a text that says WYD. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What you doing? What is your response? I said looking at you. Okay. How are you looking at them? I saw them through the window. Okay. Now, are you peering through the blinds, curtains? Mm -hmm. Is the window open? What do... uh, the blinds. Okay. Gerard then says, did you call? Mm -hmm. That's at 2232. Your response is, wasn't another car out there? What does that mean? I just thought it was more than one car out there. Okay. Did you think, who's, whose car did you think that was? Um, um... Someone that was with Rod? Yeah, some, did, some, somebody that was with them. Okay. Because um, I saw... So you didn't believe that to be Jamel's car when you said wasn't another car out there? Mm -mm. Mm. Okay. Then you reply, no answer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Maybe I'm sure, I don't think I called him. I just think I told him no answer. I mean, I could look at my phone and see. Okay. But you don't, right now, you don't have an independent recollection of making that phone call. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I just and that's fair. I mean, it's been a couple months, albeit this is a very significant event. All right. This next one, I'm not going to ask you to read it out, and I'm not going to read it to you out of respect for you. Okay? Um, that's not why we're here about your personal business. Um, but it's that's a rather odd comment for someone to make when they're in the midst of having a confrontation or anticipating a confrontation with someone mm -hmm. and they're there with some of their friends. Mm -hmm. A little strange, but maybe that's just the kind of relationship you have. Was there any intimate things that happened between you mm -hmm. that night? Mm -hmm. At 2236, Gerard asked, unlock the door. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you unlock the door. Is that right? No. I said, let me know. Did I say, let me know? When that's, you? Him. Oh, that's him. Oh, that's him. So, you know, most of um, So, at that point, you come downstairs mm -hmm. and unlock the door mm -hmm. and you let him in. Mm -hmm. And now we're back to where I got ahead of myself a little bit earlier. Okay? You let him in. Mm -hmm. He's standing there with a bat. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why in the world do you have a bat? Mm -hmm. And his response is, he was like, I just got it. I mean, oh, he probably said, I just got it. I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to you know, hurt him with it or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, something like that. A few minutes later, Jamel shows up. Mm -hmm. Jamel comes in. He's raising Cain. Mm -hmm. Does Jamel immediately see Gerard when he comes in? Or is Gerard in the garage waiting for him? No, I don't think he, he didn't immediately see him because he was in the garage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why in the world is Gerard hiding in the garage? Mm -hmm. Why do you think? This is your house. These are people that you allow into your home. Look at this. That I, want, I would like to hear your perspective on this. Why would you be at in a garage? Mm -hmm. mm. Remember, there's nothing. There's nothing that you can do that's going to change what happened. Okay, so let's just be. Let's be up front. Why would you be hiding? You're a very, you're a very intelligent woman. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. Yeah, but I'm not used to this type of stuff. I understand. <laughs> that. Uh, this is a very significant event. Okay. Well, maybe so. Just hiding from him. Just, just say he's not there. Pretend like he's not there. You don't hide for what? For what reason? Come on now, Stacey. You're, you're, you're intelligent. I am okay. intelligent, but not when it comes to this type of stuff. You're... Why, why would you be out in the garage? Yes, ma'am.
Maybe to... Not maybe. Um, I mean, the only thing I can think of somebody hiding is to kind of pretend like they're not there. For what reason? Why would they want to pretend that they're not somewhere? I know this is hard. Yeah, that's the hard question. Um, Just, just hiding, I guess. Just hiding. He's not playing hide and seek, is he? Mm -mm. This isn't a game. Right? Mm -hmm. So why in the world is he hiding from him? It's very simple. The answer's not going to be in there. Remember, he... Rod has put you in this situation, okay? Rod's actions have put you in this situation where you're having to struggle right now and tell us exactly what happened because of things that Rod did. Don't allow Rod's actions to compound things and make them worse for you. You're asking me why would he, mm -hmm. would he be hiding in the garage? Correct. Maybe so, he, so when Jamel come in the house, they can fight or something? Right? He didn't want Jamel to know he was in the house, right? Right. Okay. So that's why he was having so, to lie. Yeah. That's what because of why? Because he wanted to surprise him? Threaten him? Intimidate him? Is that why? I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but look at it from, I mean, let's look at this. If I have a problem with someone, the best approach is to go directly to that person and try to resolve your differences, mm -hmm. not resort to violence. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. A reasonable, prudent person should well, attempt. Maybe because he was scared of him? But you already told me Gerard, Gerard's not scared of him. Yeah, I don't think he is, but okay. that would be a reason. But okay, so Jamel have. comes in and starts raising sand in your house. Mm -hmm. Is Jamel armed with a handgun? I didn't Do see him. Do you see him with a gun? No, I didn't see him with a gun. Okay. If you have, you have a, do you have a concealed weapons permit? No. Okay. But you're not a convicted felon. No. So you are eligible to lawfully carry a firearm as long as you do it mm -hmm. pursuant to whatever the state statute right. says in terms of carrying it on in your vehicle or yes. transporting it to and from. But let's just say hypothetically, you had a concealed weapons permit, even if you didn't. Let's just say you were armed with a firearm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have a bat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I come at you in a threatening manner with a bat. Mm -hmm. In such a manner that I'm holding the bat over my head and I am making a mean, evil face and I look like I'm getting ready. Are you justified in using deadly force to shoot me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if Jamel had a gun and he's being attacked, chased with somebody with a bat, do you think he would have been justified in using that gun? Yeah. The situation yeah. could have been a lot worse. Okay. But you didn't see Jamel with a gun, did you? No. You didn't hear Jamel talk about a gun, did you? Mm -hmm. I mean, when he said die, I mean, how else was somebody die? Right. Well, how else? Yeah. People die every day from all kind of crazy things. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. He didn't say, I'm going to shoot you and kill you, did he? No, he said kill. Okay, but he didn't say, I'm going to use this gun to mm -hmm. kill you. No, I didn't say that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So from this point... Gerard emerges from the garage at some point. Mm -hmm. Are you? That, I didn't see. Are you at the top of the stairs? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're in your room when Gerard, when the initial confrontation yeah. takes place. I went, yeah, I went upstairs. Okay, but you were you were downstairs when Jamel came in the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's another thing backing up that you were not truthful about. Correct. Mm -mm. No, I'm trying to think. You know, you told us you were upstairs, and you were at the top of the stairs, and Jamel was hollering at you when he came in the house, because you didn't know he came in until he came in hollering. You came out of your room, mm -hmm. okay, so you were not truthful about that part, right? Okay, so now I'm trying to see, <laughs> because I remember being at the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. But you went but up the stairs be, because yeah. they were engaged yeah. in, a, yeah, in an altercation, and yeah. you didn't want to, you didn't, you probably didn't want to be collateral damage because of it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure two grown men... 
things can probably get pretty violent. Yeah. Um, they, he, like, yeah, I went upstairs afterwards. Okay. So I think even this is, this is just the, the early, early, early stages of what happened. Mm -hmm. And right now we've already got three times that we've been told lies. Mm -hmm. Okay. At what point, how does the altercation end up outside? I don't know if they went, I was upstairs, so I don't know if they went out through the garage or if they went out the front door. Okay. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Are the, the lights in your house and on your porch, are they normally illuminated at night? Do you remember the lights being on or do you remember? The porch light? Yeah, I'll leave it on. Okay. Did Gerard give you any specific instruction to turn the light off? No. To make it look like no one was home or like you were asleep? No, no, I can't remember. Okay. Keep in mind, there's... There's a reason we're asking certain okay. questions, right. okay? Most of which we already know the answer to, mm -hmm. okay? okay? This is back to that fact checking and that trust factor that we're trying to build with each other, okay? okay? So you don't remember him asking you to do anything mm -hmm. like that, no. okay? Do you remember doing anything like that on your own so that it would appear as though Gerard was not there inside the house? Mm -mm. Okay, so you don't remember intentionally turning off the lights mm -hmm. so that it would make it look like no one was there? No, it wasn't dark in the house. The okay. lights was on the, the lights house. were on in the house, yeah. okay? So at some point, this confrontation spills to outside. Yeah. Okay. At what point do you come outside? Mm -mm, after. As soon as they come out? Mm -mm. I don't think so. Because I think I had to. I'm not really 100% sure um, what time I called my job, mm -hmm. what time I called them and told them. But, I mean, I, um, that I couldn't work. So, they was already, I think mean, they was already outside. Okay. When you come outside, what do you see? Walking down the street, walking down the street. Okay. Jamel backing up. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Gerard, very well. Mm -hmm. What about Mook? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know him, but he, he not, I mean, I don't know him like that. I okay. keep friends with, with him. You don't? Mm -hmm. Nope. What was Gerard wearing? I'm sure a baseball shirt, the, um, but I don't know what, what kind of pants he's wearing. Okay. But I'm sure baseball show because he wore that every day. Okay, so this continued down the street. Mm -hmm. Did you stay out there until Gerard, Luke, and the other boy came back? The car that he got into, where was it parked? It was down the street. Like, down the street? Yeah, probably like a couple of houses down. A couple of houses down. Mm -hmm. okay. on, the, on the opposite side. Why was it parked there? Was there was there not any adequate parking space in front of your house? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was parking, it was parking all okay. over. Okay, so there was parking all over. Yeah, just to see, you know, just, I guess, to be incognito, like, to not, not let him know that it was there. Okay, so further evidence that they were trying to employ a, or put together a sneak attack on your son, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. So at some point they returned to that car. Mm -hmm. Everyone except who? Yeah. Okay. What does Gerard do? What is your interaction with Gerard? Mm -hmm. Describe his demeanor to me when he comes back to you after they, the other guys leave or get in the car. Describe Gerard's demeanor to me. Um, the other guys left and then he was just like, give me, um, let me get, let me hold the keys. And I was mm -hmm. like, the keys are what? And he was like, let me hold the keys to the BMW. You know, just let me hold them. And he it, you know? mm -hmm. Where did Gerard go with the BMW? I don't know where he went, but when he came, he had to. Okay. Did he tell you about any stops that he made along the way? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mm -hmm. how does he tell you this? Is he telling you this by phone conversation? Mm -hmm. So, he's on the phone. Um, he did. He just said he was going to my house. I don't remember, okay. what, I don't remember what the reason was. Okay. Would it surprise you if I told you that I have video evidence that shows that Gerard made a stop five houses down from your house before he left the neighborhood, turned his lights off on the BMW and walked down to the late night to look at your son's lifeless body down there? Would that surprise you? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to surprise you, but it's reality. So he stopped five houses down. You know, you remember where that empty lot was down there before that house got built? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The house next to that one. 
Mm. Walked down there. What way? Down to the lake bank. Mm. And looked at your baby who was laying lifeless down there. Okay. Somebody that he somebody that he helped raise. Okay, so the next question would be it's, it's not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but this is not a place for you to ask me questions in terms of how the investigation is conducted. No. Okay. I'm just saying, like, how would he get from back there? Like, how, how would he get from back there? How did Jamel get from back there if he wasn't in a BMW? I mean, you say he just, he just walked back there to look. Let's back up one more time. I'm sorry to interrupt you okay. again. But let's back up one more time. When, when he, he asked you for the keys, mm -hmm. you said he put the bat in the trunk? Earlier when we had the conversation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Your BMW. Mm -hmm. What year is it? 2002. Pretty good shape? Mm -hmm. No. I mean, it's <laughs> not really. It's um, I took it to the Mercedes dealer on Atlantic and he told me that I needed to trash it. He told you to trash it? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because he gave me like a whole two page list of all kinds of stuff. Just mechanical stuff? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about cosmetically? Um, the bumper was bent down on it. How about the interior? Interior? Um, I'm trying to think. I ain't seen it in so long. Um, nah, I mean, I would, it's... No. It was in fair condition, right? Yeah, I guess it's okay. I mean, okay. It wasn't, yeah. Was there anything missing from it? Missing from my um, mm -hmm. And I'll be more specific. Let's get to the trunk area of your car. Was there anything missing in your trunk before you gave him access to that vehicle that night? Was there anything that was missing out of the trunk? Specifically upholstery? You know, most trunk areas have like a mat that covers the trunk, like the floor of the trunk, and then underneath that, I'm not sure, I'm not familiar with BMWs, so I'm not sure about underneath that the spare is actually in that part or if it's somewhere else. I don't think it's a spare. I don't think it's no longer. But it has a mat in the trunk, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So that mat is there for obvious reasons because it helps catch stuff so that it doesn't get all, all over the place. Right. So was there a mat in the trunk? Yeah. Okay. It, and it would have matched the color of the upholstery in there? Maybe, yeah, probably. Okay. Well, I mean, it's your car. I'm asking. I, yeah, I'm not. Probably. Okay. Probably. Do you remember what color the... That's upholstery in, inside the trunk is? Oh, the car, I think it was gray. I okay. think it was gray inside. It was gray. Oh. Okay. So you don't you don't have any recollection of a mat not being present, right? Being missing. So there was a mat there. When you yeah. when you gave him access to the car, that mat was there. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he puts the bat in the trunk. Mm -hmm. Drives down to the empty lot. Gets out of the car, walks down the lake bank. Comes back. Leaves. What does he tell you next? When's the next communication you have with him? Do you stay on the phone with him? Mm -mm. Does he say, I'll call you back? Mm -hmm. What happens? Yeah, he probably said, I'll call you back. But I, I kept calling him saying, um, well, I need you, you know, I need you to come back because I don't want Jamel to come back um, starting some stuff. Okay. And he was like, well, you scared of Jamel? And I'm like, no, I'm not scared of him. I just don't like, you know, confrontation, drama, and all of that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He was like, well, I'll be back around there. And I was like, well, okay. So I think I called him a few times. But okay. Was there ever a time when you called him and he didn't answer his phone? Mm -hmm. I don't think so, yeah. I would say so, maybe. Yeah. No, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not. I would say so, yeah. Okay. Do you remember how many times and or what time you may have tried to place those calls? I may have to be in the morning. It had to be like one or two in the morning. Okay. Is that? I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not really. No, no, and I'm not. I don't. Ex I don't expect you to tell me the exact okay. minute, hour, whatever. I'm just, just a, a ballpark figure. Okay. Yeah. Um. Is that normal for Gerard not to answer his phone when you, when you call mm -hmm. his child, the mother of his children? I mean. Because if you're calling repeatedly, that should be some type of signal for him that hey, maybe I need to call her back. Something could be going on here, right? Maybe she needs something. Maybe the kids need something. Yeah, I mean, but people don't, the thing about that is, is that, yeah, he, it has happened plenty of times where mm -hmm. I called several times. I mean, even today I called him a few times and mm -hmm. I didn't get an answer and I needed him to get my um, son and take him to school. Okay. So, 
I called him a few times. He didn't answer. So that's not something, you know, that I would I would think of. You know what I mean? Like, okay. So at the time, it didn't alarm you? No. Okay. It didn't because... Did Gerard come back to the house that night? Mm -hmm. What time did he come back? Um, um, it probably was around maybe two or three. I don't know because I had to because I had to take him to his car, and then um, okay, I had Where, to take Michaela to the, I meant take um, Mika you know, go to the airport. So it had to be maybe around two, three o'clock. So who did you take first? You take yeah. Michaela to the airport first? Um, mm -mm. dang. Um, I had to have yeah. Okay, so you took Michaela to the airport and dropped her off. I thought the police dropped her off. Yeah, the police did. The police did. The okay. police dropped her off. I paid. I bought her ticket. When you had to go out there to give her the bag. Fee. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that was so. That was the last. So, so actually, I took him. Before that. Yeah, I took him. Well, the police had already left to take her, or whatever. Okay. And then. Then he shows he back came, up. Yeah, he he said he came back. How does he get car, back to your house? In the BMW. Okay. And what does he, he came back to my he came back to um my house mm -hmm. in the BMW and then he asked me to take him to uh asked me to take him to get to him. Okay, which car was that? The Lincoln. This one, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And you're so did he did he just show up at the house? Did you guys have a did he have a phone conversation? Did he call you and say, Hey, I'm coming by the house? Or did he just show up at 3 o'clock in the morning? No, he, ca he called me. He called you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sure he called me. All right. And when he shows back up, is he wearing the same clothing he had on earlier? Mm hmm Okay. Is he, does anything seem mm -hmm. out of character with him? Mm hmm He seems normal? Mm hmm So you take him to pick his car up at? I dropped him off. Oh, okay. So you drop him off at Irving Scott? Mm hmm Conservatively speaking, we're talking between three and four in the morning. Something now. like that. Right. Maybe, yeah, maybe three or four because I had to leave. By the time I got back from the airport, I was taking, I had to take my son to the bus stop. Okay. So you now return home, correct? From dropping him dropping off. Dropping him off, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, presumably at this point, both of you have been up all night. Mm -hmm. When is the next time you see Gerard? That morning, 10 o'clock that morning. 10 o'clock that morning? 10 o'clock that morning. And that's when he comes back over in the Lincoln. Right. And then we, and then that's when we go to um, downtown in our own cars. Separate cars, mm -hmm. but y'all follow each other. Kind of, somewhere. Not really. I yeah. mean, you knew where, each of you knew where you were yeah. going and you planned to meet at that location. Yeah. Why did he come to your house? Oh, he just said he was coming so we can go down there together. But you didn't go down there together. I mean, we both pulled off at the same time. So, yeah, we, we, we got down there. I'm trying to think. We left, yeah, we got down there around the same time. We parked. That's like the computer for those cameras. Mm -hmm. What was his demeanor like when he came over early that morning? Was he... Uh, when we was going downtown? Mm-hmm. Before you before you left to go downtown, when he comes back to your house, I mean, just normal, just normal. Ins was he inside or outside? Outside. Okay. What was he doing outside? Well, I was across the street when my neighbor's house when he pulled up. Correct. And um, I know that. <laughs> and then um, I was talking to them or mm -hmm. whatever. And when I seen him pull up, it was I think it was actually on the front porch. This is Vanessa and Greg. Yeah, when he, when he pulled up. So I was over there talking to them, and um, he pulled up. I still was talking to him for a while, and then I went across the street. What was he doing while you were still talking? Walking around. Where? In the backyard. Why? I don't know. Why do you think you're a very intelligent one? To see if something's back there. But he didn't bring, I mean, he didn't bring anything out from that there or anything like that because I would have saw him do something like that. But I guess to see what's back there. Mm-hmm. So, 
Doesn't it strike you as odd mm-hmm. that he's just walking? That's not something normal, is it? That's not his normal behavior, is it? No. He doesn't take care of the grounds? No. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, I asked him, I asked him. I said, what you doing? And then he was just like, well, I'm just back here looking. Um, so, that's potentially an area where there was an altercation the night before mm-hmm. that he's involved with. Mm-hmm. Now he's going back to look, see if there's anything there. Mm-hmm. You didn't physically see him bring anything back from, from down there? No. Okay. I mean, he didn't go down nowhere. He just, like, went to the backyard and then, like, over a little bit. Down. Over a little bit as in behind your house? No, nah, to the, like, like behind to the, next, to the house? next house. Yeah, okay. like, behind to the next house. He just went down there a little bit and then just came back. You know, there okay. was nothing. He didn't have anything in his hand. So you guys go downtown to mm-hmm. file for injunctions? Mm-hmm. How does that, what's the outcome of that? Well, it actually, um, it came, they couldn't do anything because he was not, uh, well, because Jamel wasn't. Well, I actually, I actually called a police officer myself that, the one that, um, it was a police officer that, um, because I had went down to get a, it's called an unlawful, uh, unlawful something. And I went to file one of those. And then the police officer that I guess was over it, um, said that um, it's really no need for you to go down to do if Jamel is, is a missing persons um, case or whatever so it's really no need because if you don't come to court this is the next day? no 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 this was afterwards what you asked I'm sorry I thought you was asking that me next morning that no 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 the, the, the okay. next morning okay. yeah yeah so does are you the only one that files for an injunction mm-hmm, he did who's he Gerard so Gerard filed for one too mm-hmm. okay were both of them granted yeah so they issued you a temporary injunction too? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, did you apply for anything else down there? I did the, um, the, um, the thing, the, um, Baker Act. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you did that by what? You filled out an affidavit? Mm-hmm. So you had to provide them with a sworn statement at that point. Mm-hmm. And at that point, you knew something had happened the night before. You knew something bad had happened to your son. Mm-mm. I mean, I no, I didn't know that nothing bad happened to him. Stacey. I just, I just. Stacy, listen to me real quick, okay? Yeah. Four guys chase your son behind the house. Your son never emerges from back behind. Listen to me. I just want you to listen to me. He never comes back from behind the house. Mm-hmm. Gerard is freaking out about the cameras. Take the cameras down. Take the cameras down. Mm-hmm. Something has got to be going off, and your some alarm bells and whistles no, have I mean, got to be going off that something bad happened. As far as something bad like that, no, because if, if, if that was the case, I wouldn't have tried to get no locks changed on my door. You know, I wouldn't have been telling him, well, you know, um, I need you to come back over here because, you know, I really want Jamel to come back, you know, and I'm here by myself mm-hmm. and he act, you know. So I didn't think nothing physically like happened to Jamel. I really didn't. At that point. Right. But when, okay. you, when you saw him earlier, you said you saw him running. You said you saw Jamel backing up. Yeah. As the other people were approaching you. Well, yeah. Isn't that almost like a defensive? Wouldn't he be on the defensive at that point, Jamel? But he was. This is what he was doing. He had a. He had his phone, like he was recording or something. It was like he was on live. You know how they on live chat or something. He was. He was not acting like he was scared of what was going. You know of what was happening. So. So no, I really didn't think nothing actually bad physically happened to him. I really truly didn't, because like I said, I. I just thought maybe he he got out of there, got out of the neighborhood or something. But as far as something actually happened, plus Rod was like, he was back there. He said that uh, somebody is on the way to get him. So I thought maybe somebody picked him up. You know, I didn't think that something actually physically happened to him. Gerard he, tells you that someone's on the way yeah, to pick up he said, Jamel? Yeah, he said, um, he like, I guess when he was backing up or whatever, he was like, yeah, somebody, um, oh yeah, my dog on the way. Um, to get me or whatever, to pick, to whatever, my dog on the way or whatever. Gerard's telling so this what, to you? Yeah. No, he told me this later. He said, yeah, he said that somebody was going to come and um, pick him up. So I'm thinking, you know, like I said, I didn't think nothing happened to him physically mm-hmm. because I'm thinking, okay, well, Gerard said somebody was going to pick him up and come get, come get him or whatever. So I'm thinking okay. that's the person came and got him. Because Gerard even told me the next day, he said, the next day, he said, I, I went home and guess who was on my, um, at, at my house? And I was like, who, Jamel? He was like, yeah, Jamel was in a, a great car with somebody. 
So I'm thinking nothing physically happened to him. So he tells you the next day Jamel's at his house? Yeah. On Velvet Springs? Yes. In a gray car? A gray car, a dark color car, or something with us, some, with somebody else, yeah. And then he said to him... Is this... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And then he said to him... Um, yeah, I, I told you I know who you live at. Or something like that. Like, Jamel said that to him. Is this so, before or after you go down to file for the injection? That Gerard before. tells you this? Before. So when Gerard comes over in the morning, yeah. he tells you that Jamel showed up at his house. Yeah. In a great he car said, with he somebody. Said, yeah. He and, said, he said, um, I went, I went past my, I went by my house and guess who was there? And I was like, who? Jamel? And he was like, yeah, Jamel was there in a dark color car and he was sitting with somebody. When did he go by his house? I guess after he... Got off work. He hadn't been to work. This is all night. This is all night event. No, 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 no. This is, this is, Sherrod goes to work early, every day, like mm. four or five o'clock. He didn't go to work early that morning. Well, from what I understand, <laughs> Gerard goes to work every morning, four, five, six o'clock in the okay. morning. Every morning. Okay. And this that particular morning, we were supposed to meet at ten, meet around ten something to go downtown. He said he was at work. He left and went to by his house. He went by his house, mm -hmm. and that's when he saw Jamel in a car out there and said, "Jamel said, I told you I know where you live at." Okay. So with me thinking that he done seen Jamel the next day, mm -hmm. why would I think that something happened to him? Mm -hmm. Like, And you're going based on upon the information that Gerard provided yes. you. Yes. So you didn't physically see Jamel yourself? No, but, because But he, you had no reason to believe at that point that, that Gerard yeah, he was, was lying. Okay. Yeah. All right. So y'all go down, you file for the injunction, do the Baker Act. Yes. Right? And why would I do a Baker Act if I thought something, would, like if he was hurt, harmed or something like that? Because I really, really, truly thought Jamel was okay. This man said that he's seen. Um, so now, how do we get to the point, what happens after you do the injunction, what leads up to the point to where a missing person's report gets filed? What happens in those next three days? Because now we're on March the 7th when you file for the injunction. Mm -hmm. What happens over the course of the next three days? How many times do you see the Lincoln? Is he still driving the Lincoln on a regular basis at this point? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think I've seen the Lincoln. I think I've seen the Lincoln. I oh. think. Okay. I'm 100% sure. Okay. So what happens after that? What, 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 happens? What, what happens that leads you to the point to call the police to re report him missing? Nothing really... Um Nothing. I mean, I'm not sure what caused him to do it. I, I called down to the police station mm -hmm. and um, just told the guy that I needed to file. I wanted to file a missing persons um, report. Okay. And so he was like, he looked up. He um, looked up whatever information he looked up, and he said. Um, He would schedule, he would send somebody out there. That's what he said. He would send somebody out there to the house. This okay. is on a Saturday, I believe. Okay. So he sent somebody out to the, he sent the young uh, officer out to the house. Me okay. and he was talking or whatever, and I was telling him that I wanted to file a missing persons report. And um, he was like, he looked up everything, and he said that there was a case already done. So he said, you don't really need to do anything. Then, um, he said, so you don't really need to do anything. And then, um, then a bunch of people, I guess, came to the house. I wasn't home, but from what I understand, my neighbor called me and was like, it's a bunch of people walking around, this and that, this and that. A whatever. bunch of people? Yeah, like, like um, Malcolm Mama and... So not, not just, law enforcement personnel? Just These are friends of Jamel's? Yeah. Where are you at at this time? Um, shoot. Mm. I don't know where I'm at. I'm probably doing errands, running errands. Okay, so you're, but you're in town somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in town because I had to go. I was running errands. So yeah, I was in town. Okay. So Jamel's friends are out walking the area, talking to neighbors, mm -hmm. 
searching the area, seeing if they can find anything related to his disappearance, mm -hmm. right? Prior to them doing that, mm -hmm. how many times did you go out and talk to your neighbors, walk the area, and look for Jamal? Well, I looked in the back all the time, every day. I look back there every day. But as far as talking to people, I don't really, like, I don't really, like, do, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not that type of person that's going to be going and talking to people or whatever. I, I do things on my own. Like I say, I look, look in the backyard every day. Mm -hmm. every what do you mean day. by that, look in the backyard? I mean, are we talking about looking out the window? Are we going out there and we're physically checking a certain area? Mm -hmm. just, what are we doing? Just looking out there, just looking out. Looking from upstairs, looking down to mm -hmm. see if I see him around, or like see anything laying around or whatever, or around. Downstairs, looking out to see if I see anything around. Mm -hmm. Right, and when I come in through the neighborhood, I ride both ways so that I could see if I see anything. Mm -hmm. um, just stuff like that. But as far as talking to people, no, I didn't do anything like that. But you had knowledge that his friends were out talking to people and looking, right? Mm -hmm. At any point, did you think perhaps you should be there to? And as a show of support to help try to find your son? No, because I don't really, because like his, um, the lady, I don't really, like I don't really deal with confrontation or whatever, and I don't really like certain people okay. or deal with certain people. Mm -hmm. So Malcolm Mom, me and her, is just like, I wouldn't, you know, I just don't. You get along. Yeah. So Malcolm's don't get along. We had, a, we had a conversation. The thing about it is, is that. Me and her had a conversation at, on the phone that same day because the neighbor, one of the neighbors was calling me saying, well, there's people out here, da, 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 whatever. So I was like, oh, okay, who? She was like, somebody named Bond, Malcolm Mom, or something like that. I was like, okay, well, let me talk to her. So I get on the phone with her, trying to have a civil conversation with her, and she started going off on me. So I was like, okay, it's done. And, that's, and that really is what made me say, you know what, forget it. So, okay. um, so as far as that, no. Mm -mm. But I guess... I guess my question is, what changed over the course of a couple of days that, because the day after, according to Gerard, he saw him, you thought everything was okay. Mm -hmm. What changed that led you to believe that something happened to him that you needed to file a missing person report? What, what changed? Something had to change. Either you had to get some updated information, you had to learn something about No, that. he was, because he was missing. I just wanted, I wanted to find him. I wanted to know where he was at. I mean, Jim, Jim, I mean Gerard said he's seen him, but I haven't seen him. Mm -hmm. So, I, uh... Had you tried uh, calling him? No, I, I didn't try calling him because his cell phone was, um, dropped in the streets. Where is his phone now? Oh, I don't know. What happened to his phone? I don't know. I think Gerard may have picked it up. You okay. think or you know Gerard picked it up? I think, I'm pretty sure he picked it up because what it was a phone in the street. What did he do with it? What did Gerard do with the phone? I don't know. I don't know. How do you, I remember how do you know it I remember him picking up a phone, but I remember him picking up a phone in the streets, but I don't know if it was Jamel. You um, saw him do it? Yeah, he picked up a phone in the streets. That I night? I don't, I don't really want to say. I can't say because I'm not 100% sure. I know he picked something up. But I wanted to see it must have been that night, right? When it was dark out? Because he didn't come by. I mean, he doesn't. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that night. What was it the next yeah. morning? No. No, it wasn't the next morning because he didn't get anything the next day. Are you starting to understand and see a lot of the things that Gerard has done now mm -hmm. that implicate him as someone who had direct involvement in the disappearance of Janelle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Um, But for the fact that he said that you man, I mean, I, don't, I didn't just didn't have a reason for him to, to tell to say that he saw him and he, it wasn't true. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, there's a lot of things that Gerard does that apparently are not true. Did he tell you to call the police to report him missing? Hmm. You did that on your own. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you report him missing. Flyers get made. Yeah, but I didn't make the flyers. I did. I had when I came home. It was flyers. The home. detectives come out. Mm -hmm. That Sunday, right? Is it a Sunday? No, it was the same day. Was it the same day? It was like March 11th. That's the day they um, did the searching. Or 10th, or 10th, that's okay. the same day they did the searching? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it, no, it was the night before. It was what? The night before. But then the following day is when the extensive search takes place? Yes. Where they search the pond and all that? Were you home when, when they were searching the, the dive team? When the dive team came out? 
That was the next day. Okay, so yes. the day that I found a missing person report is the day that they came yeah. out and did the searching and all of that. And then the next day is the day the dive team came. Correct, yes. So, yeah, they searched twice. Twice. Yeah. Okay. Were you home while they were doing yeah. those searches? Mm -hmm. At any point, did you go out and have any interaction with any of the law enforcement personnel yeah. over there? Yeah, he told me to go in the house. He said, I can understand, because he was talking to those people out there that was out there. The ones that you didn't necessarily yeah, get along exactly. with. Exactly. He okay. said, I can understand why. He said, you, you're nothing like them. I can understand why he said, but he said, you can go ahead and go in the house and I'll come in there. Okay. So I went in the house and um, then he came in, they searched the house and all, you know, did whatever they supposed to do okay. or whatever. Then that was it. All right. What did Gerard tell you happened to that car? I told you he told me that he, um... He didn't tell you he burned it? Mm -mm. He told me he, he um, took it to a, um, like, the pe the place, the junkyard that buys cars. I tell you where? Mm -mm. I didn't ask. Can you tell you how much you got for it? Mm -mm, I didn't ask. And I know we have asked, I don't know how many times, and it's not a trick. Your position is that you maintain the fact that Gerard has never told you what he has done with Jamel. Yeah, no. He has never told you. I asked him. I asked him, what, what happened to Jamel? He was like, well, I told you what happened. He, um, you know, we, we um, went right there. He ran across the street. He uh, uh, went behind the house or whatever, and um, he got away. That's it. Okay. So he never said that he was involved in a physical altercation with him. It was just words, and they chased, and Jamel got away. He never admitted or told you that he hit him, punched him, kicked him, hit him with a bat, nothing. Nope. And he said, he, he says he never put a, put a bat on him because he said, he to this day, he'll tell me, if I hit Jamel with a bat, there would be blood back there. Um, they would find something, but there's nothing back there, Stacy. There's when nothing back there. When, when Gerard came back from the, to get the keys from you, and he had the bat in his hand, did you notice if he was sweaty, if his clothes were wet, soiled, dirty, anything like that? Did it look like he had been in a fight? Mm -mm. He looked like he was in a fight. Okay. Yeah. Was he sweaty? I want to say yeah. Okay. Was he out of breath? No. Was he excited? Was he no. nervous? No, he just was like, let me, let me get the keys to the car. Okay. And I was like, well, you know, ask him if he needed keys to the car, but no, he wasn't. Once the BMW was returned to you, <laughs> did you alter or modify anything in it? No. Okay. Did you take the placemat out of the trunk? No. Okay. Um, and, I'm, and I'm also a little peculiar at the fact of why when the police towed that BMW from the front of your house, mm -hmm. in your home, and you never come out mm -hmm. and say anything to the police officer. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, um, because it was a Something going on as far as Jamel missing. I'm sure they was doing, you know, whatever the investigation mm -hmm. that they was doing or whatever, because it was a, a police van out there and um, a police van out there and a police car out there. So mm -hmm. I didn't but, say anything. Well, do you think that they would try to make contact with you from the outside looking in? Does that the police officer? I mean, um, what's his name? Uh, Tom Burke said when I talked to him the next morning, or I don't even know when it was, but a I week talked later. to him, and he was like. They were supposed to come and um, knock on your door and let you know that they were getting it. And I was like, well, no, they didn't say anything. All so, right, no. let's play. Let's play. Okay. Opposite sides of the spectrum here for a minute. Okay. From our shoes, does that appear to be consistent with the behavior of a, of a mother who is concerned about the welfare of her missing child? Do those actions of not I'm having, because it almost appears as though you're avoiding law enforcement at that point. Because you see, you clearly see law enforcement out there. And you clearly see them towing a car. Mm -hmm. um, but if my child was missing, the first thing I would do, I would want to go talk to the police and say, hey, have you found my son yet? But I, ha but I have obviously time to, um, to, to tell We're talking the night. We're talking the night the car gets towed. Police are there. Clearly he hasn't been found. Why would they, why would they tow your car? If they were there to deliver good news, they would have come up and said, Mrs. Studemeyer, I have great news. 
We found Jamel. Okay, Jamel's okay. Mm -mm. So you're asking if because I didn't go out there to see why they was towing the car? I already knew why they was towing the car. Why? Because there was because they thought because Jamel was missing, and they probably thought that the car was involved in it, and that's yeah. why they was towing it. So I wasn't gonna. I mean, it's not like I I need to try to interrupt whatever they they got going on. Whatever they okay. whatever they need to do, I'm gonna let them do it. Okay, but you you you. No, you voluntarily gave Gerard the keys to the car, mm -hmm. and you watched Gerard put the baseball bat in the trunk. Yeah, but yeah, I, I watched him okay. do it. Okay. Um. Um. Well, I hate to keep harping on it, but we've got to figure out where he is, okay, and give him the proper homecoming he deserves, because he's not capable of coming home by himself. Yeah. He needs he needs our help. Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to take a little break. Okay. Do you need to use the restroom? Would you like something to drink or anything like that? Okay. Give us a few minutes and we'll be back. Okay? Okay. Okay. They are what do they expect you to log on? At ten o'clock. At ten o'clock? Okay. You you need any anything else? Something to drink, bathroom break, anything like that? No, just Okay, give us a couple minutes, I'll let you tell us. We'll make some kind of arrangement for the call, okay? Okay. Alright. Number or is it stored in here? It's, it's stored, so you don't know the number by heart. No. Okay. I'll let you get the number out, but you're gonna have to use the. This is one of our city of Jacksonville phones. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna sit here with you while you do it. Okay. This is the. Well, it's Venus, yeah, but oh. I, I gotta get the call out number. Uh, gotcha. I won't, and will I be going home tonight? I know. I'm going to jail. Can I just tell you that I'm not gonna be able to be able to make it in tonight? Yeah, could you um could you send an email to Su to Susan? Thank you, love. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, is the other guys gone? No, they're doing something right now. Need some water or something? No, I um, wanted to ask them something. Okay, I'll send them back here. Okay. Ah! Okay. Who you want to call? Um, my aunt. Okay. So they, could, could they start doing the bond? Like, as soon as we get through this, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll let you make it. Um, we'll, we'll make arrangements to either let you do it here or they'll get you a, a call over there, a free call over there to where it doesn't charge or collect or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, again, we're back to, back to a couple things. I just want to clarify a couple things. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we came close to as we left off was related to um, Jamel's cell phone. Where where in the street did you see Gerard pick this up? Was it relatively close to your house or? Mm -hmm. I think like, yeah, kind of like near the between my house, nah, next door neighbor. Next door, so if I'm standing in the street and I'm looking at your house, would it be in the direction right. where you saw them down the street or in the opposite direction? No, so just to the right. To the right. Mm -hmm. And that's if I'm standing in the street. Looking at your house, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, what type of cell phone did Jamal have? Um, an iPhone, I believe. Do you know what model? No. Okay. Do you know what color? Did it have a phone case or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, did you buy it for him? No. We bought it for myself. We used it on Hyper again. Okay. So, did you ever ask Gerard for his phone when you saw him pick it up? Did you say? Because hey, I don't mean? even know if it was his phone. It didn't look like an iPhone, so I don't really, I really, truly don't know. It looked like a cell phone. Okay, it so, looked like a cell phone. Yeah. But you, Gerard, did Gerard ever show you what he picked up? No. What did he do with the object that he picked up? The object that he picked up that resembled a cell phone. What did he do with it? I don't remember him discarding. I don't remember what he did with it. I just know he picked something up that looked like. So he got rid of it. I guess. I mean, I guess because I didn't. No, I guess. See I mean, you just said. I didn't see him discard it. That's, yeah, that's, I didn't see him discard it or anything like. I said I didn't see him discard it or anything like that. So I'm not sure what he did with it. Okay, but there are also sometimes that there are also sometimes things that our words say. You know yeah, yeah. that. Sometimes our words say things, mm -hmm. and our brain is thinking something else, and I'm just curious if that's one of those things that kind of slipped out. No, it didn't slip. I said I didn't see okay. if he discarded it or anything like that. Okay. I don't know what he did. Did you see him put it in his pocket? No. Did you see him give it to someone else? No, but nobody else was out there. Okay, so he was by, this is after the other three guys had already left? Yeah, this was like, probably like, um, when I was getting ready to take him to his car, probably. Okay, so this is after he has left and come back and brought the BMW back? Okay. Um, and at any point, did you call Jamel's phone? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I called his phone before. Well, I'm okay. sure you have called it before. But we're talking about... After we're, 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 yeah. I'm referencing immediately after this incident. Yeah, I'm sure I did. Okay. And do you remember how long after? Do you remember if it was while Gerard was gone, while Gerard was there? No, I'm sure I called after, afterwards. After? After he was gone. After Gerard was gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did anyone answer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did it ring or did it just go directly to voicemail? Voicemail. Straight to voicemail. Mm -hmm. What does that... What does that mean to you when a phone goes straight to voicemail? Then it's not It's off. Okay, it's powered off. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that something Jamel normally does? Power his phone? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, sometimes I used to get his voicemail straight up, but then I send him a text message, and then he might respond and say, okay. "Oh, I had, I had it on. Um, do not, you know, I had it on something." Or whatever. Sure. Now, did you send him a text message as well? Mm, no. Mm -hmm. No. So in the days following this, you know, obviously we have the shit on that call. Wish he's called him. Oh uh, yeah, you got this is yours, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
Actually, I think we have some other stuff that might be easier to filter through too. Um, I'm gonna grab that. Huh? I'm gonna grab that. Yeah, if you want to grab that, that might be a little bit easier to do. But if not, so, in the days following that, did you try to continue calling him to see if you could get in touch with him? Mm -hmm. Do you? Well, I'm asking. Do you remember? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, that's okay. You can leave that down here because mm -hmm. he's got. We've actually got. You know, the printed out records like I had your mm -hmm. thing. Um, if you can't find it on there, then we'll look in here for it. So you don't remember calling him? I said I'm pretty sure I did call the number. Okay, but something like we talked about earlier, something got to the point where it it prompted you to call the police to report him missing. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that was. What what got you to the point that you became concerned for his welfare to call the police to report him missing? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess my, my follow-up to that is, is how many times did you try to get a hold of him by phone or by text where he did not respond in order for I'm you to do sure. that? Okay. Sure. Do you remember doing it repeatedly just once or twice i mean i'm just trying i'm trying to put myself in your shoes i'm trying to think of the emotions you would be going through with a he, albeit he's an adult but the fact that he's missing and trying to get in touch with him i mean are you is this something you're kind of frantically trying to get in touch with him or is this no, i wasn't frantically um, okay. calling the number i may have i may have called the number were you concerned about his welfare of course okay why I didn't know where he was at. Okay. Was this out of character for him? As far as not talking to me for a little while, no. Okay. Not. How about absolutely zero communication? Not being able to get a hold of him by cell phone? Not being able to confirm yeah, his whereabouts? Out of that's out of character. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, going back to the police report, I think you told them initially that that was the kind of the norm for him for to do stuff like that. Yeah, for a while, but then eventually... So which started. one is it? Is it out of character or is it normal behavior? Eventually, Jamel might get mad at me. Okay. Like I told police and I done told y'all this. He okay. may get mad at me. Um, I said this yesterday. He may get mad at me mm -hmm. because he done asked me to do something or whatever the case may be. And and I might not hear from him for a while. Okay. Then, it, then maybe a while later he might send a, a, a text message or a picture or something like that. Then we'll stop back talking to me. I got you. So, when Gerard was there, you said he had a baseball shirt on? But I told you we were able to see on the surveillance video. Do you remember him having that no, baseball shirt on that night? I don't night? remember it, but you said he had one on. And okay. He, he wears one all the time. He wears one all the time. Mm -hmm. okay. But you don't specifically remember him wearing his shirt, having that logo or emblem on it that night? Okay. Now, like I said, that's fair. I mean, it's been, we're talking, it's been a, a considerable amount of time since these uh, happened, so I don't think that's unreasonable to think that. The, I, I, and I hate to keep bouncing around, but I, there's just a couple things that keep coming to, to my mind. One of them was about the car in your um, concern about having Jamel's car towed that night. Mm -hmm. it, it, from a parental standpoint, I'm a parent also, and it seems like my number one priority would be to, or any reasonable person would view this as, the number one priority would be to try to ensure the safety of their child and well-being of their child, not worried about the private, you know, Stripping the privilege of the you use of a vehicle take, for that Can I just take me to wherever I need to go at? Then I'm done talking. Okay, sure. Thank you. Good. I don't have access to your phone. Just remember, you're responsible for this, not us. Alright, so I just push work, you get done. Sure. If you do them like you're praying, it's a little easier. Mm. Put your hands together like you're praying. There you go, it's a little bit easier. 
So you actually had a warrant of bench or just a KPS was issued for financial responsibility for driving on suspended license. Uh, My license suspended? Well, that, that's just it was for a warrant was issued for that. I'll just let you know, it just was issued two days ago. So what am I, am I being arrested for? For accessory after the fact, for the murder, and then you just have a local KPS for... Um, What's accessory after the fact? Having, you were, you, I mean, you pretty much had things that were, that because of the murder, mm -hmm. you did things that accomplished that murder. But it's a murder? Yes. Okay. I mean, we talk, I mean... I don't, I don't really know how else to say it. Somebody killed Jamel. So, like I said, we can't really get into a question. You said you were done talking, but that's where we are right now. Okay? Okay, and then you said a warrant? You just had a local KBS, that's all. Okay. I'm just letting you know. That way you're not giving any surprises. Dozing off? Dozing off? Yeah, well, I guess we got one thing in common. We were all both. We, we all back all night. You probably have more yeah. speed than we did. Alright. I'm disappointed in you. Why? Because this shouldn't get to the point. I've had no reason then to. Then I'm get under arrest with my under arrest one. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, okay? Before we do anything, I'm going to go over your rights with you, alright? We're at 501 East Bay Street. Today's date is 524, 2018. And the time is... Uh, 1711. 1711. Mr. McFedder, read that first file for me. We have uh, following rights under the United States Constitution. It says you do not have to make a statement or say anything. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before you make a statement or before any questions are asked of you and to have the lawyer with you during any questions. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questions if you wish. If you do answer questions, you have the right to stop answering questions at any time and consult your lawyer. You understand your rights? Okay. So right there for me to send that we read your rights and that you understand them. Okay. What we want to talk to you about, we want to give you the opportunity again to see if you're ready to come on board and talk to us. We told you yesterday that this thing was not going to go away. All right, and we begged of you not to tie our hands and put us in situations to end up where we are today. Mm -hmm. Our thing today is, is that you've got to understand one thing, and I don't know what it's going to take for you to understand that, is you're in a situation that you didn't put yourself in. The people that you were hanging with and dealing with has put you in a very bad situation. Mm -hmm. And you need to make a decision today. What do you do to get yourself out of it? Okay? Mm -hmm. As you see by now, this is not going to go away. And we've tried everything we could possibly do to reiterate to you to show you that this is not going to go away. And I think so far, everything we told you that was going to happen has happened. Can we agree on that? We told you that it was going to continue. We told you it was going to go to another level. We told you that it was ultimately going to end up in, to, in the predicament that we're forced in today. Mm -hmm. Okay. We just need you to walk us through and we can prove that you know more than what you're telling us. And that's where your problem is coming, okay? Mm -hmm. What you need to understand is is that there's no law in the world that says this or see something, has knowledge of something, 
that she has to pick up her phone, call the police, and come to the police. Mm -hmm. I wish to God that we had that law in mind and somewhere on the books. It would be a great tool for police also. The problem that you're having is, is that we've came to you numerous times, ask you information, you tell us you don't have the information, or you know nothing, and then we can turn around and prove that you do. Okay. Okay? Our thing today with you is, is that can we have a conversation with you where you sit down and just go over with us what you know in regards to how important you think it is, how insignificant you think it is. We are dealing with a big puzzle. Hypothetically, we're dealing with a puzzle just for us to give a vision. It's the size of this table. Mm -hmm. You could very easily have that corner piece or that middle piece that helps us complete this puzzle. So what we want to do today with you is, if you want to talk to us, just lay it out, what you know, what you've been told, okay? Mm -hmm. I want you to understand something, and I, and I keep stressing this to you. The people that are involved, everybody's world is slowly tumbling down, okay? Everybody's walls are caving in. And there is nothing you can do at this point to stop them from getting what they're going to get, mm -hmm. okay? With that being said, can we have a conversation today? Well, um, in response to what everything that you just said, I've told you, and just like you told me, you know, think about this, you know, think, put you and your kids first, you know, tell us everything, um, and I feel like I have. Um, I don't have a problem with cooperating. Um, I don't want to go through the questioning alone um, just because I'm not familiar with any of this and it's not that I'm trying to save anyone or help anyone if something somebody did something wrong I'm not against what you know your guys' job I'm right. not against that and, that, and that's what we want and it's just that you know it's been days of this. I've never been in trouble. I've never been in trouble. I teach my kids to hang around a certain, you know, watch who you're around. Absolutely. Try to keep positive energy in your space. And it's just like the last couple of days has been like uh, kind of surreal for me because I work hard. You know, I go to work, I come home, and that's pretty much all I do, you know. Um, so again, it's not me not cooperating with right. you or not, and we you know, are. or trying to help someone or anything like that. It's just that as far as me going through questioning or anything, I just would like to have someone with me. Someone with you. Yeah. But understand something, and, and that's your right to have someone with you. I don't know who someone is that you're like referring counsel. to. counsel. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying you want counsel with you before you talk to us? Yes. So you don't want to talk to us? Okay. Alright. And I want you to understand something else. Huh? This is nothing personal to you. We're all in situations where we got to do what we have to do. Yeah. Okay. And you know that. I want you to know that. We have, you know we've been nothing but professional. Yes. Not, whatever yeah. we are having to do, it's nothing personal to you. We all just have jobs to do. Yes. And we are doing our job the same way we would do it if it was your family member. Yes. Okay? Yes, so I understand it's nothing personal. Yes. Okay? Well, Y'all not going to beat me up in this. No. Well, we're, not, we're not going to beat you up. We're not going to let nobody else beat you up. Okay. Yeah, all right? We, uh, there is a warrant for your arrest. Okay. Uh, for accessory after the fact. Okay. And then we will have to serve that warrant tonight with you, okay? Okay. All right? Tonight or we're gonna serve right like in a, a right. few minutes. Okay. okay. So, um, before we do that, is there any arrangements that we need to make for you for your children? Do we need um, to call someone or? Do I get to call someone? Um, you will point? when you get over there. When you get through the okay. into the booking well, process, have, you'll have um, access have to a free here? phone call. I have yes, I have family here, but I have someone picking them up. Okay. Yeah. So, but I just. I'll call and, you know, check on everything. Okay, so there's no immediate concern right now in terms no, of care for your children that no. we need to address. No. Okay, because we want to make sure they're taken care of. Okay.
Okay, you ready? Just have to put these on you. Just walk over there, okay? So you put them together like your praying is a little easier. Oh, like this. Yeah, that makes it a little bit easier. There you oh. go. That way it's not a little easier. Is it? What's in your pocket right there? Oh, sure. That's it. Just ID card. Okay. You got nothing. You don't else have anything here? else. No, I don't. Have okay. Anything. Okay. Okay.